Peace to the saints. We have a session that I think we'll all enjoy because it involves both comedy, good information, unique perspective. Uh, Cat Williams is similar to Dave Chappelle in that he's highly intelligent. And for that reason, I think people have you know, problems dealing with him because he's both intelligent, moral, and honest, which is rare. A lot of persons that have extraordinary intelligence, similar to Cat Williams, Dave Chappelle, they might not be moral and honest. You know, they'd rather just sit back and make a whole bunch of money, which is you know, fantastic. Can't hate them. Most individuals are selfish and self-interested. When you find that rare bird like a Cat Williams or Dave Chappelle that they're willing to risk their income to tell you the truth, boy, those are great men. And these kinds of great men will indeed be attacked. Um, I'm going to go ahead and plug this in so I can give you a little bit better audio. Please confirm that the audio is better now. I do want to give you a heads up that my meetings today started at 4 a.m. So as a result, I've yet to have breakfast. And so at some point, I will have to take a breakfast break. Uh, just go ahead and bear with me. Carrying on. Um, by the way, for those of you uh, men who would like to support the work, you can do so here. You may have noticed recently on uh, some of my videos, they've removed the super thanks button as Google is taking greater efforts to censor uh, myself and others who speak truth. Oh, by the way, I'm watching this completely uh, brand new with you all. So I'll be giving my live real time reaction. product here and as a fan base we love the attention and unbelievably you are magnificent at intros and you did not skimp on mine i appreciate it appreciate that Fair you know anytime you come to club shay shay we have to talk now one thing i must concede uh is uh, i i don't know if i want to call this brother um or like call his podcast club shay shay does that sound fruity to you or is that just me? It sounds feminine. Shay Shay? Yeah. That sounds fruity, right? I, I swear some black girls used to call somebody Shay Shay when I was a kid. You going to Shay Shay birthday party? Like, I feel like I just hear some black girls saying that. Like, I'm not about to call this grown man Shay Shay. I don't, I don't know what that's about. Uh, I, but I guess it's not unusual that he would go by a, a weird feminine name because his mother named him Shannon, yeah. which is also a white girl's name, right? Yeah, that's crazy. It gets like that. Who, who, you know, what can you do? Yes, bro, you've been doing it. I mean, you told you one of the top two. You're the one of the top touring comedians of all time. I did appreciate that. Tell the people at home. I thought they was lying, and um, <laughs> yeah, it's stronger. So right now, what Cat is doing is he's giving uh, Shannon Sharp uh, some promo for his alcohol brand. And me, uh, I don't drink alcohol. I recommend that you all don't consume intoxicants of any form. But I want to point out to you guys with Cat uh, there speaking well of Shannon's alcohol brand. He's helping him promote, helping him sell his product. This is what uh, people who are collegial do. This is what real men do. They earn together. If you've read my book, The Black Box, which I highly recommend to you, you can get it on Amazon.com. One of the lessons that I learned as a young man by a mentor I had, he said, if if they don't earn with you, they're not really your friends. And that is something I've carried throughout my entire life. It is all well to you know be buddies with someone and enjoy a couple laughs, but what can we build together? What can we earn together? That is where you build real relationships and also you get to truly take the measure of a man and what he can create. Everyone can sit back, have a drink and have some laughs, but who's considering um, who's considering helping you earn and make a better life for yourself and for your family? Though I don't condone alcohol at any uh, level, I think it is extraordinarily destructive. There's almost no good that comes from it. Um, but you see right now, Kat is taking out the time to help Shannon Sharp promote his product at the beginning. That's what I teach you guys, product-based business. I'm a real capitalist. I want you all to be prosperous. And only those who are wicked and those who are foolish um, fail to earn and won't help you earn better, maybe because they're jealous of you. Shout out to David, supporting the work, truly appreciate it. We also have Britain support it as well. Yes, indeed. Shout out to the real ones standing up. And unbelievably, 
show them how prepared you are. The same things that we liked about you in football or the truth to be told. You know what I mean? Thank you. I appreciate and that. I have watched all of these lowbrow comedians come uh -oh. here and disrespect you in your face <laughs> and tell you straight up lies. <laughs> I'm talking about things that have never. May I speak to Cat Williams um, character right now? And mind you, if you'd like to see the video, you can watch the video directly. This is commentary on the video. One thing we must uh, observe about Cat Williams' character is that he's a unique person in, in as much as he's a brave man. There are very few brave men uh, walking the earth today. And what's even more remarkable about him being a brave man is that he's also a man of small stature. And this is how I know Cat came from the gutter, similar to myself, because one thing you find in a, in a, in a ghetto in America is that you know the small guys aren't scared because they're small. You heard me, they're gonna do what they gotta do to survive or thrive. And when I think back about the savages in my neighborhood, a lot of them were the smaller guys. You know, Guys you didn't wanna get mad or get an issue with because you couldn't predict what they would do because they had to go overboard and do the extra uh, just to win. Uh, so Cat is very unique in as much as he's a brave man, despite being a man of small stature. He does speak truth and he doesn't care uh, what anyone else has to say. And similar to revolutionaries of the past, uh, people who uh, speak the truth and live the truth and are unafraid, they end up incarcerated. Cat's done a lot of time, good Lord. Uh, but this is not unique. And I want you guys to start understanding that when you're within a wicked society, a wicked, corrupt government, their laws are wicked and corrupt. Hence, the men who are actually the most upright and just can also end up in jail alongside criminals. I'm not a religious uh, or I don't speak of religion, uh, but even uh, the Christians are aware that Jesus was strung up on a cross next to what? Criminals. Carrying on. On Cash Up, we have Anthony sent tuition. Shout out to Anthony. And Marco says peace to the saints tuition. Peace to the saints been heard in all of black Hollywood. They feel comfortable sitting here lying to you about it. You gonna set the record straight? Are you kidding me? You let Ricky <laughs> Smiley sit here and you said out that mouth, you stole Friday after next. The one I was in, <laughs> I wish all, all of America fumbled a bit when that happened. And, and then he said some stuff that we haven't heard in 100 years in Hollywood. You ain't say nothing. This man told now, Cat is quite unique because not only is he calling out his peers who are wealthy, famous, well-regarded, so he's calling out his peers, people who are in a strong position. That takes a brave man to do. But in addition to that, peep this, he's also calling out Shannon Sharp. He's saying, oh, yeah, you, you, Shay Shay, <laughs> Shay Shay, uh, you know, you've been playing nice with him. You never called him out. You didn't challenge them when they were saying nonsense. So shout out to Cat. He's keeping it a buck. And this is what I expect from people that come from the lumping class or they come from uh, black men who have made it and earned their way out of an American ghetto. I expect them to have a higher level of realness. And that's what you observe in the few of us who have made it out. Most of the black men you observe in the public uh, sphere, they were not the hustlers in the neighborhood. You are me? These were the nerds, which there's nothing wrong with being a nerd. I mean, obviously it, it yields better outcomes but they're not going to have that level of realness and fearlessness that you would observe in a cat. I told you, he had Cat Williams' role. He was going to be Money Mike. Wait. And Cat Williams was going to be fr was going to be the Santa Claus. Now, let's three quick points. Three quick. You mean in Hollywood, they cast a five foot five black Santa Claus that weigh 145 pounds. That's your story. Huh. Your story is the Ricky Smiley that couldn't even do curse words because he had a Christian fan base. He was going to play the pimp. Mm. Why you didn't ask him, why has he played a woman in more movies than he's played a man? Well, I, so there, just right there, there was so much to analyze. Number one, just look, I, I, I point this out a lot to you guys because people love sports, right? Too much. <laughs> you hear me? <laughs> people paying attention to sports, like they getting paid to be a, a sports analyst. It's crazy. But um, if, if we could have less talking, if we just get the food set up with no talk, I'd be thankful. Um, anyways, so with looking at this, you see a Shannon Sharp across from a Cat Williams. Shannon is the big guy, the big muscular black guy, the buck slave, right? 
And then Cat Williams is the small black guy who doesn't fit the stereotype, right? He's not the big, strong, black West African build. You know, he probably wouldn't have been sold for very much during slavery. You know what I mean? They have them open slave markets. I mean, Cat was going for the low. You know what I mean? He was damn near getting a coupon if he was buying Cat Williams to be a slave. You know what I mean? Like you buying a you buy a, a, a grown man and then Cat is like the 0.5. You know what I mean? Point is this. Shannon Sharp is in his position because of the big, strong black guy. And Cat is in his position wholly because he can outthink you. He can outthink you. His mind's moving faster than yours is. And we can even tell that by his speech and by his cadence. So what we have to understand is that when you're dealing with Cat, though he may be a comedian who tells jokes, he also tells truths. And that's precisely why he is feared. And that is why he is in the position that he's in, because he's able to do things that others can't do because he sees and understands things that others can't see and understand. He's not in his position because he's uh, just terribly good looking. <laughs> he's not in his position because he's big and strong. He's not body beautiful. Hell, half the time he tacky as hell. You dig? Uh, I mean, shout out to that chain and that beanie and the hair that's under there that he's concealing. But he's in his position because he's a bright man. And we can see right here, it highlighted the only reason these two men are on an equal playing field. Shannon's holding down the physical weight and the strength and Cat is holding down them. He's a mental heavyweight. You dig? Shout out to Jabari. He writes, peace to the Saints. Off topic question. Saint, do you have experience with uh, Tanzanian women? A little bit. I've been to Tanzania, moved around there. He writes, I met one here in America. Ah, that's different. And my time with her was interesting to say the least. Yeah, I mean, you have to judge each individual as you encounter them. She comes from a decent culture, but often you find that those in America... Uh, are often a touch different than those you would encounter in their home country. Uh, sometimes they're more ambitious, the ones in America. They certainly come from the upper class of their country, generally speaking, unless they're coming from Latin America. Um, and typically they tend to be more liberal. So when I say they come from the upper class of their country, not the highest class, because if you're in the highest class, you don't need to leave. So meaning that they might have been upper middle class or middle class. So that's just the fact of the matter. And uh, forgive me, uh, as I said, I will have to uh, have a bit of breakfast as, as we go through this. We have Zachary sent tuition on Cash App. Shout out to Zachary. We have Justin came in and said, importance of raising sons to learn how to cook. I think it's important that they know that they need to have a meal every four hours and they know how to get some healthy, nutritious foods in them. I would make sure that my male children uh, are able to provide themselves a balanced diet, primarily based on uh, raw foods, simple things to consume. The cooking I would leave to my girl children. If my male children for, had some particular interest in culinary arts, such as being a chef, then sure. But in my perspective, it is not the responsibility of the male to be a preparer of foods or one who is a excels in domestic chores. Okay. The major minorities came in twice. All right. So here's the first part. He said he's using the tactic to bring attention to himself, the prince. That's a good question. Or I, rather, I don't. Did he have a question mark on that? But let me take that as a question. A question you see, often people uh, assume that you're being driven by base things. For example, I often remind you all that you can understand all of humankind for the most part by looking at their motivating factors through the lens of fear greed and affection. So fear, they're scared of something. Greed, they're pursuing money. Affection, they want intercourse and they want to be admired and revered or they want to be famous. However, there are a minority of persons and truly a minority who have some nobility. They speak the truth because it's the truth because they're driven by it. I don't perceive Cat Williams to be attempting to bring himself attention to increase his network, uh, net worth fame, or what have you. For example, there are many persons who speak certain truths that it causes them to lose money. You'll, If you've been following me a long time, I was in Erie, Pennsylvania, had an office there. I was working on a deal. Was, was that a Fortune 500 or Fortune 100? Uh, at least Fortune 5. I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if it was Fortune. I think it was Fortune 1. But either way, I was working on a very big deal in Erie, Pennsylvania. Those of you who have research skills, you'll, you'll be able to figure out who we were working on the deal with. And the deal didn't go through. And it was specifically because of my YouTube content. 
So if I were to attack someone on YouTube, would you rightly say, oh, he's trying to get attention or clout? Well, no, I, I lose money on YouTube, the money that I could have made in the real corporate world where money is big and it matters. Super Chats, what are you going to do other than buy me lunch, right? Um, so Cat Williams, the kind of truth he speaks, the kind of truth that Dave Chappelle speaks, that's the kind of truth that's going to cause you to lose money. You might get a little bit of attention in the short term, but you're going to lose more money in the long term. Don't forget about when they said Dave Chappelle was crazy and he went off to Africa and he was using drugs there. And why did they say that? Because some of the things that he spoke up on and he continues to speak up on, whether it's the Skittle guzzlers or certain lobbies that uh, run America and American government. So I think that's perhaps a an accurate way of generally looking at human beings. Like, for example, if you're looking at a, a, a Jerka, like these clowns clearly do things solely for attention. There's no greater purpose driving them. They're, they're jesters. But when you look at and listen to uh, Cat Williams speak or Dave Chappelle speak, they are indeed entertainers, comedians, but what they choose to use for their subject matter uh, sheds a great life on a, a light on the realities of our world. And so I encourage you to, to you know, dig in deep to what they're saying. So, no, I don't think it's a Machiavellian uh, tactic that he's using. OK, and then he came back and said, any advice on how to be a better interviewer myself? When you say interviewer, are you speaking of one who conducts the interviewer, uh, excuse me, conducts the interview or one who is being interviewed? Either way, it's going to require similar skills, but a different kind of thinking. So similar skills in speaking, dialogue, pacing, but different thinking. Uh, one of the things I'm happy to say is for the Master Communicator course, I'm going to record a video today that is going to uh, talk about when to speak and what to say, what not to say, not all things need to be said. Part of being a great communicator is knowing what need not be said, Contact uh, context matters a lot. So you really need to dive in with some proper education if you would be good at communicating. Uh, people forget that we're always essentially, you know, they wanna differentiate public speaking, interpersonal communications. Are you not always on a stage? If people are listening to you, are you not on some sort of stage being observed? Are you rising to the task? So long story short, any advice on being a better interviewer or interviewee or communicator? Yes, the Master Communicator course will be the most complete work on communications and it will be given by the best in public speaking and interpersonal communication. And it's linked in the chat. It is indeed linked in the chat. There you go. Carrying on. I didn't know he, he could... shouldn't be able. You wouldn't let a, 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 a athlete that been on steroids talk about one of the greats. <laughs> Ricky Smiley can't act because Ricky Smiley oh. can't act. Oh. He told you the story about when the movie came out. Where did he say he watched it at home? He wasn't even at the premiere. You telling this man you stole that all oh, so he could get his name in the same sentence. What a great one. It is. Now, that's ironic. What Cat Williams is saying now is the opposite of what the super chatter had suggested. You no, know, Cat is saying, hey, Ricky Smiley brought me up to increase his fame, notoriety, acclaim, attention, clout by using my name. So it was actually quite the opposite um, in Cat's view. So it's worth listening and making your own assessment. But um, at the end of the day, these guys are all entertainers primarily. But I think that cat has greater um, nobility than these fellas. And we can observe such in as much as you don't see cat in dresses and you hear cat saying things that are unpopular, but truthful. And one thing I also want to note in terms of communication, what to say, what not to say, being cognizant and aware is important. Cognizant, intellectually aware. You may have heard the gentleman just brought in my room service, my breakfast. And I don't know why in the hell he kept talking so much. Did he not notice that I was in a meeting. And I wasn't talking to him. Yeah, and you weren't responding. I had to tell him, stop talking, just set up my food. He's not aware. Well, I'm not surprised. That's why his primary role is serving my food, because he's not intellectually aware. It's not that he's dumb. It's a matter of personality, and it's a matter of choosing to be cognizant. I mean, the man is watching me sitting here talk to you, and he's over here like, do you want me to put the food here? Where do you want the juice? What Bruh, just set the table up and kick rocks, bruh. Good Lord. I heard you say that you're trying to minimize the talk. He right. just kept talking. And that's also very feminine. You see, masculine men, we don't talk so much. I really want you all to look in that mirror. If you gain nothing from me, gain the ability to self-examine and self-reflect 
And just today, I um, I was talking with the executive of the Lady Saints, whom I'm very proud of. She's uh, exercising great leadership. And, you know, we had some discussion about an item within the Lady Saints. And I said, OK, this is good. These women are going to gain very much from being within the assassin because I can see that they're not self-reflecting. If you can't look in the mirror and deal with what's there, there's a you're seeing a problem and you need to fix it. Don't avoid it. Don't lie to yourself. Fix it. Deal with it. Carrying on. It's sad. He was just that bitter when we were shooting it. He told everybody it should have been my role. Everybody on the scene. Why do you think no cast member has ever said anything? He couldn't have played that role like you. I thought he, he Sir, was no one. Why? No. He was with KD. He beat up Terry Crews. Why? Nobody know this story. You talking about in Hollywood, they switched off roles. You take this and he what? So Ricky, Ricky Smiley knows this. And I don't know why he would lose a child and come on the air and start lying. That's why people believe in rituals right there is because, well, why would he lie? I don't know why liars lie, but I look, cat be, <laughs> cat be talking that real. He said, I don't know why liars lie. Let me answer that for you, cat. Liars lie because they're liars. Haters hate because they're haters. It is their actual nature. Some of us suffer based on who we're around and we pick up bad traits. Just like if you were to hang around great men, you might pick up some great traits. Recently, my mother had called me and she was talking uh, about my younger brother, whom she has a bit of a rocky uh, relationship with from time to time. And that's because they're very similar. And, um, you know, she was recounting the story to me. And then I almost, and she told me how my brother said, well, you don't treat Mark like this. Now, mind you, like, you ain't the big homie, bro. You ain't going to get treated like the big homie until you're the big homie. And so as soon as she said that, I was like, man, why is, like, why is he always involving me in this? I don't have anything to do with this. And then eventually I almost said something negative about him. Now, mind you, that's my brother. I love him very much. And he's not on the phone call. So if I were to say something negative about him, that would be slant, uh, that'd be backbiting. That is not my nature. I don't gossip behind anyone's back, not men's back, not my family, no one. It's just not necessary. And it's pointless. And what I realized is that my mother was dragging me down to engage in backbiting because she was expressing and venting her frustration. And I immediately, I said, ha ha, you almost got me. Hey, it was nice talking to you. I hope you guys are able to patch that up. If I can help at all, let me know. But I'm not going to sit here and engage in backbiting and you almost got me. Why do I say that? Because the people you are around, they might drag you down to a certain level. And more importantly, connecting with why Kat, when Kat said, well, I don't know why liars lie. I don't know why haters hate. Well, haters hate because they're haters. That's their nature. huh? When you're around people who have a certain nature, you better flee from around them lest you will begin to pick up those traits. And in some cases, you might have a saintly nature, but you grew up around demons and wicked people. Sometimes they're related to you and you end up assuming those behaviors. Let none of you do that. Let you always dive into your saintliness. And I'd rather be alone than be around wicked people or people who are not good people. Okay, we have Gravity Films. He sent a cash app. His question is, I interviewed a very popular producer and he mentioned that a famous singer has an incurable STD. Would it be honorable to keep that in an interview? Let me ask you this. So be yourself, be good to yourself, be good to good people. Number one. So let's hold on to that. Number one. Why did you interview that person? Presumably to get some exposure for your platform. Maybe if it's on YouTube, you want to get some ad units running, high viewership, things that are more controversial, you'll get better viewership on, right? So that's, there's a business logic to making sure that you air that interview and you put the most sensational title. What I would do, which would be both upright and fair, I would reach out to that famous singer through whatever means, at least multiple means. So there's an evidential base that you tried. And I would say, hey, I've just received some information about you that is very sensitive and negative and I don't feel comfortable putting it out. Would you mind if I interview you? to clarify things or just to get your perspective. So you're basically offering them an opportunity to say, hey, rather than me putting out something bad about you, let me just interview you and allow you to share your own story and your own perspective. And so you're basically saying, hey, we're gonna do an exchange. If I can interview you, I'll get the same number of high number of views based on you giving me the interview. 
and I get to avoid putting you out there on blast. But if they decide not to give you the interview, then go ahead and do it because one, you don't know them, so you don't know them to be a good person. Number two, you don't hustle with them. You don't earn money together. So they're just a stranger to you. So offer them the olive branch, the opportunity to represent themselves, the opportunity to preserve their reputation. If they don't take it, then go ahead and put it out because you're in business and that's your business is getting views. So I think that's completely fair. Okay, we have off cash shop. Perry says tuition for another light bearer. All right. Zachary sent more tuition. He came in earlier. Shout out to Zachary. Perry also came right back and he said, dude was feisty making all that noise. You feel me? And so often I observe the feminine male. Our society is so lost that we don't know what is chiefly feminine and what is chiefly masculine. You know, people might look at the velvet pimping and say, wow, bro, you got on, you got on all this velvet and you're, you know, you're well taken care of. You're, you're, you're a feminine. No, I'm I'm a super player. You dig? I have good hygiene. I have hygiene and taste. Elegance, you might call it. But with if you hang around me, I'm not babbling my mouth like a broad. I'm not engaging in con, uh, constant gossip like a woman. You hear me? I'm highly disciplined. That is masculine. You know, the dude came in here serving food. Truth be told, ideally, he'd get in a job where he's not serving food. I don't even like when they send in a male uh, house, uh, what do you call the people who clean up in here? Housekeeper. I don't want a male housekeeper. I don't even want a male waiter. You hear me? I want a beautiful woman cleaning my house. I want a beautiful woman serving my food. So he's already in a feminine role. So it's not shocking that he's behaving in a feminine way. And one thing we have to understand is that there's levels to all things. You hear me? There are great men, there are good men, and then there are bad men. Okay, we have Kadavian says peace to the saints tuition. Peace to the saints. Nick came in as a tuition message in the chat, so I will work on finding. I don't think it's there yet. Okay. On PayPal, we have Frank said first time sending tuition piece to the Saints. We have Amos sent the additional consultation consultation fee. So if you want to book a consultation mm. with Mark Pfeiffer on, he's an expert in Amazon. You can book that through Mark Pfeiffer by sending three hundred dollars on Cash App. Yeah, Amazon and real estate. Yeah. And when we say Mark is an expert on Amazon and, and real estate, he's doing uh, in excess of $50,000 per month on Amazon alone. He has an extensive real estate portfolio, which if you went to my conferences, you'd know it. He gave lectures at the conferences. In fact, I think on the assassin.com, you can buy the conference footage where he talks about if you want to get into real estate, this is how you do it. Takes you through a case study on properties that he has. And he has properties in prime locations in America. Like for example, the San Francisco Bay Area, that is prime real estate. In fact, when I was living in San Francisco in Pacific Heights, one of the most expensive uh, zip codes in the country, um, that's when uh, San Francisco had surpassed Manhattan as the most expensive real estate market. I'm going to link the conference footage, and it's a perfect time because remember the baller alert Joshua sent, letting people know the loan rates are going down for multifamily properties. It's love. And if you become a member at patreon.com slash the Saint in the Center or the Sassin, you become a part of a community of people who are really hustling and have great values. And just like Joshua, you know, a knowledgeable real estate man who's highly successful, he said, hey, I just want to share this with you guys. You have access to men of that caliber, and that's really what you want. Okay, so that's linking in the chat right now. We have Subadai came in on Cash App and said, peace to the saints, loved what I saw from the interview. And mm. then he sent another cash out. He followed back and he said, going to tap in with the Sassin soon. Happy New Year. Absolutely. Happy New Year. And shout out to the Saints in Saint City. Okay, we have Artist Phoenix at $50. Baller alert. He said, hooping. Peace to the Saints. Peace to the Saints. George says, peace to the Saints. Could you please contact Cat Williams to arrange an interview? Additionally, I would like to, you to interview Dr. Boyce Watkins. I believe he's leading black men towards unproductive relationships. <laughs> um, so... I recommend that you all do all these reach outs and I'd be happy to follow them up. So I'll tell you what, if someone has a significant following and by significant, we'll say 100K subs or more, or they're super bad B, um, then go ahead and set it up and I'll agree to it and, and we'll get it going. Um, but yeah, Kat, I respect. So if you can make a, if you can reach out to Kat, mm -hmm. I, I'd actually be interested to do that interview. Okay. Yeah, this is Nick's. Um Chat. He said, as always, thankful for you and the high quality men you have brought into my life. Absolutely. Anything you need, I got you. I appreciate Peace that. Peace of the Saints. Two of two, so there might be another one. Yes. While you're looking for if that. If I don't see the other one, go ahead and resend it, please. I can tell you this. 
We auditioned in Los Angeles. Yes. I was audition number 201. 200 black comedians auditioned for the role of Money Mike with me. You're saying all 201 of us was auditioning and you had already had the role and had already shot the role in four days? The truth of the matter is the Money Mike in the original script got raped in the bathroom. And that's what Ricky Smiley was okay with. Cat Williams had to take the risk in front of the studios and the cast and our powers that be in his very first movie and say respectfully, humbly, guys, if we talk about anything else, I have no credibility and I have no pull. But we're talking about comedy, right? Where I have all the credibility. And number one, shout out to Cat because what he's describing, please take that super chat off the screen. What he's describing is the fact that as a man, he stood up on principle in the face of power and at the risk of losing money and his opportunity. This is radically different from what you often hear from the women in Hollywood. Oh, I had to, oh, I had to uh, do all these things to advance. Did you have to or did you choose to? Want to take the easy road, did you? They don't have any values, principles, or morals. So they engage in all variety of filth so that they can pursue the holy dollar. Whereas Cat is describing completely the opposite. He's even going as far as to say, look, I got the role, but I'm not willing to play that part of the role. That's powerful. And most importantly, it should really impress you because Cat Williams is saying, I don't want to be in a role as a male where I am sexually dominated by another male that's powerful because he's a small guy if anybody can be you know sexually dominated by another male it'll be cat williams but even as a small man he's still in, still standing tall how funny is it that so many men who are actually big physically can't stand tall see terry cruz as an example big black guy all these muscles looks like the perfect slave you hear me but he's the same guy, little fat white dude. He's like, he fondled my balls. I couldn't do anything. He fondled my balls. It's like, bro, you got all the muscles, but you can't use them. Because the greatest muscle you have is weak. The brain. The greatest muscle you have is weak. The brain. You're a very typical black guy, right? Big, strong, tall, play basketball, dunk basketball, catch football, run fast. You know, all the skills that they trained you to have, all, all of the genetic gifts of slave breeding, but you're thoughtless. So Cat Williams was still strong enough mentally, and despite being a man of small stature, said, I will not be made to look small and weak on screen, for I represent the black man, a great man. Ooh, that's power. Okay, Nick's first cash up was... Thank you for creating Bosch University. I was going over the lessons earlier and got the opportunity to engage with a highly successful person about managing low quality people in life. Wow. And I did link Bosch University in the chat for those interested. Yes, and I have to remember I need to increase the price yes. per my word. And add the payment plan. Ah, that's true, that's true. I tell you that price increase is for damn sure about to happen uh, <laughs> ASAP. So if you guys are uh, prudent, you might get that before that. A uh, payment plan I'll uh, set up when I get, get around to it all the pool the problem with friday after next is we're trying to make a classic comedy and this comedy involves a rape and rape is never funny no matter who it happens to or what the circumstances are if you would allow me to allow us to do this movie without a black man getting raped in it i promise you that it will be twice as funny you know, that's very fascinating because it would almost seem basic and elementary that R-A-P-E occurring is not at all humorous. In fact, it's traumatic for the persons who would endure it and the ones who would observe it. Strange that anyone, and we know this was a group of people, decided to include that in a comedy. And that's a very serious thing. So I really want to inspire you all to think critically about this in as much as when a script is being produced in Hollywood <clears throat> or a storyline, a treatment, 
it's done by a collection of writers, which means that there was a collaboration, there was confederacy among a number of men, males rather, a number of males who collectively thought this was a good idea. I often wonder about things like this. When you hear of heinous crimes that involved collaboration, it lets you know there, there were a number of sick people and there was no one person who was either moral or strong enough to speak up and go against what was prevalent. That's why I remind you, we're raising up the leadership class of men who are strong enough to say, even against greater numbers, hey, this is wrong. Hey, I don't agree with this. I won't participate. I won't cooperate. I'm against this. This is not right. We have a lot of deluded persons today. They suggest that, you know, if I was if I was in Nazi Germany, I, I wouldn't have gone along with it. Yes, you would have. Yes, because that's the human nature. They're like sheep, sheeple, the average person. You would have gone along with it. You would have done everything. You would have been all on board, just like you're on board with what's going on today in America. Tremendous corruption. For example, Jeffrey Epstein publicly said, hey, I don't feel like I'm going to take my life. I feel fine. Then all of a sudden, he took his life. But there's no video footage of it. Well, I thought prisons were monitored, especially high profile people. Then there was a list of the persons he had done business with, filthy business but the government won't release the whole list? Why? Jeffrey Epstein was a criminal. The persons associating with him were accessories to crime. Why won't you release the whole list? Because government personnel is involved. You are clearly in a time where your government is extraordinarily wicked. I don't care if we're talking about the right side or the left side. There are two heads on one dragon, one demon. It's a two-headed beast. There is no such thing as choosing the lesser of two evils. That's still evil. It is the evil mind that would select between two evils. As it would be. Go ahead. We have manuals that appreciate the great work you do on these lives. I appreciate and you. George K. sent tuition. Shout out to George K. With him getting raped. So considering that's the real story, why would you bring up that story? 35 members of the cast and crew have never brought up that Ricky Smiley was going to play Money Mike. No one ever saw me put on a Santa Claus suit. We got a wardrobe department. They made a Santa Claus suit for me. Why that wasn't in the bloopers? Why? And, and here's the other thing. Everything that Money Mike said, Cat Williams wrote. So what Ricky Smiley say on his? You can't say my lines. I wrote them. That's how I already know that I'm going to be funnier than you. What he told everybody was, Cat Williams, hey, hey, don't nobody know who he is? I'm on the radio. I'm with Steve. Now, that's funny as hell, because who listens to the radio? Like, word? Yeah. No one listens to the radio. I've been turned on the radio in many years. Maybe if you're either a senior citizen or you're in poverty, you might listen to the radio. But if you're a young person, you're listening to Spotify, you're streaming on YouTube. Uh, you're streaming on Apple Music or um, you're listening to Sirius XM. If you have money, you might have that subscription in your automobile, but no one's listening to the radio. That's quite ludicrous. So clearly Ricky uh, Smiley is appealing to an older audience, which is not good because you have you don't have long uh, what's called lifetime value of a customer. LTV. L whatever it is, but lifetime value of a customer. It's short when your your audience are senior citizens. So it shows that there's a level of delusion there. And is Ricky Smiley funny? I think he is funny. Is he funnier than Cat Williams? Maybe, but there's this other element we seek out when we listen to stand-up comedy. Those of us who are uh, intelligent, successful, we, we like to laugh. In fact, we love to laugh, but we also like to hear the truth, things we can relate to. We have Ricardo sent 60 Canadian dollars. Baller alert. Said your content has been helping for years. Let's keep gliding. Peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. I appreciate that. And shout out to those men whose name I know because they support on a regular basis and they've been with me a long time. Yeah. Yes. Beautiful thing. And say it. Everybody know me. That's what he told everybody that would listen to on the set. That's the truth of the matter. He was so egregious. Not now. Then he was so egregious that and Hollywood has never heard this in a hundred years. He was so egregious. I put in my contract that I won't work with Ricky Smiley again unless he's in a dress. Now, what was Ricky Smiley's next movie? Was it first Sunday? Did he wear a dress in it? You bet he did. It's in my contract. Listen. Listen, I've disrespected a lot of people in my life. 
Look, true story. I mean, there was one time I went into an Apple store. I saw this one cat I had a beef with. You heard me? That's when I was a young boy. I was a wild boy. I walked into the Apple store. He in there with his homies and his girlfriend. I walked in the Apple store, slapped him dead in his face like he was a hoe that owed me money. You dig? I'm disrespectful in a real way. But this was another level of disrespect. I mean, this man, in this, this was extraordinary. He said, look, in my contract, I will not work with Ricky Smiley unless he's in a dress. So foul, but it's also the most uh, gangster way to emasculate someone to say that I don't even find Ricky Smiley to be authentic unless he's acting like a broad because that's who he really is. Oh, that's woo. But here's the sad part Ricky Smiley would just be one such character and a whole line of black males who seem to get curiously placed into dresses. Which is funny because I remember when I was uh, in showbiz for a short time as a youngster, I was in acting and modeling. And I remember when I was in acting uh, class, the first thing that I was told directly uh, was by my acting coach. He said, don't ever try to be anything other than you, because if the if we're casting for something that is not you, which is a young black boy, We'll just hire someone that is that. If we want a midget, we'll hire a midget. We won't ask you to pretend to be a midget. If we want to hire someone with an Australian accent, we'll hire someone who's Australian. We will never hire you to be something other than that which you are unless you're ultra famous. So until then, become good at being yourself while on camera. That always stuck with me. It was really impactful advice. And so what it's funny to me when you put all these black males in dresses is if we really wanted to have a movie about a Medea figure, and this is a very Southern thing, like my, my uncle's aunt and my mother, they call my grandmother Mudia. They say Mudia, which is Medea in some ways of pronoun pronouncing it. But this is a chiefly Southern term referring to a, a matriarch, a you know, big old fat Southern black woman that goes to church and wears colorful dresses and big hats. That's the figure. Now, the question is, if you want to make a movie called Medea about this black female figure, are there any shortages of fat black women, old fat black women? They're everywhere. Most black women are fat. So in as much as that's the case, why would you hire a grown man to pretend to be a fat black woman unless you wanted to emasculate him or he wanted to emasculate himself or he had some secret fetish to do it or... Um, we're trying to create a in certain kind of imagery that's degrading. You know, you just hire the real thing. You see, you don't need to hire someone to act a certain way. You could just hire someone that is that. We're thinking about clearly. Cat has thought about this. Why would you put that in your put his, in your contract, Cat? That's where he's the a believable actor. <laughs> Him and Tyler Perry can't play a man to save their life. They play good women. And I believe that the best actor should be in the best role. So that's why, because when we released that clip and he said that you responded because he said he was supposed to play Money Mike and you were supposed to say, play Santa Claus. An outright lie. So that he knows is a lie. So why would he say it? Because he's a liar. Nobody knows why liars lie. And that was brilliant. You see, one of the greatest challenges we have as moral, upright people is we project. I, I can't tell you how many times there have been lies made, like fraudulent claims on videos and bridge. Like, so-and-so said this about you. So-and-so said that. Can you believe it? We got to sue them. I'm like, nah, we, we can't sue all these people. There's too many of them. She said, but they said blah, blah, blah. And she knows it to be a lie. Well, it fires her up because she knows the truth of who I am. But the fact is that Liars lie. They're going to make up things. Wicked people, their chief tool, the number one tool of the wicked is deceit. Adam and Eve, the apple, the serpent, deceit, deception. So in as much as that's the case, an honest person, a good person, when you hear, when you hear someone say something, you tend to believe it because you are primarily honest. When someone lies to you, you're confused and you wonder why, what drove them to do that? Why would they do that? You're confused because it's not your nature. That's why I always tell you, be good to good people. But here's another thing. Be around good people. You don't have to be on guard all the time. But when you're not around good people, you must constantly be on guard. 
And yes, they will lie. They will deceive. They will trick. They will be jealous. They will do all of these negative things and you'll not be able to read their moves because it's not your nature. You can damn near, you damn near can't predict it because you don't fully understand what drives them to feel like that. Like, so for example, me, when I'm out in this world, I see another gentleman fresh dressed, looking good. You know, my first thought is, bruh, you killing them out here, man. Oh man, I'm about to go home and get dressed, man. You didn't raise the bar. I'm issuing out compliments. Why? Because when I saw him, I'm like, this is a beautiful brother right here. Yeah, man, he's adding to the atmosphere. I appreciate it. I am not a hater. I'm looking at him with admiration and respect. I'm going to compliment him. If his old lady there, man, I'm about to blow him up. You dig? Yeah, if he on a date, I'm about to blow him up. He getting laid tonight because I'm a compliment because I love to see it. Why? Because I'm on the level. You heard me? The hater, if they see another guy looking good, their first thought is like, oh, they feel inferior. They poke out their chest so they don't look bad standing next to a great man. You heard me? Yeah. What is the nature of a hater? They want to they wanna have friends who are below them so that they could always stand out. When the women come around, they're always the one that the woman wants because they're hanging out with Tweedledee and Tweedledum, a fat guy and a loser. They don't want to hang out with bosses. They don't have the confidence and, and energy and presence to hang out with other bosses. Huh? Yeah, that's, they're black-hearted. They're wicked. They're jealous. This, sadly, is the nature of most of humankind. Increasingly so. Huh? Daryl came in on Fair Shop and said, just walking in. Peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. Um, and then thank you, Taylor, for the support. Shout out to Taylor. Abdulli for the support. And I think that was Taylor, uh, T-A-Y, right? Yeah, T-A-Y-L-E-R. Yeah, and Taylor's a real one because he always comes in on the back and like if he sees a video that he likes, he'll come in and uh, hit that super thanks button. So I, I really respect that. I really do. And you guys will notice the super thanks button is disappearing on my content and that's because I'm being censored. And so that's why I always encourage you guys uh, to support via Cash App or PayPal, which you can use below because we get to cut out the censorship corporation because they, frankly, they hate the truth. They are, in fact, our enemies and we're utilizing their platform while we can. But we know that there may be a time limit to this. Someone did ask for the Venmo and I don't even know your Venmo. I don't either. So it's- And that's why I had to come on the program. Cedric did the same thing. Cedric told you when you asked him, did you steal Cat Williams joke? Yeah. He said, it don't line up. How it don't line up that I did it on TV in 2018. You came to see me at the comedy store do it in 2019 and then did it on the Kings of Comedy. Like what doesn't line up? I This is a televised joke that Mark Curry helped me punch up and get to the level that it was. The same Steve that went to go watch Mark Curry do his whole sitcom and then stole everything Mark Curry had. Now Steve got a sitcom where he the principal and he wear a suit and he, and then he gets this high top fade making all black men think he got the best lineup in the business. And it's amazing. No, this man is coming for everybody. Go ahead. Wow. We have Charlie came in on cash app and said tuition received and we'll start reading your book. Shout out to Charlie. You're going to enjoy the black box. Do let me know what you think. It, it's a, it, it reads like a movie. I wrote it for people who are not readers because I didn't complete my own, my first book, reading my first book till I was 16. So I, I really wanted to be mindful of that as I was crafting that book. And we have Joseph P. came in with tuition on Cash App as well. Shout out to Joseph. And the black box is now linked in the chat. See, I like Cap because he's fearless. Not only is he going up against heavyweights in the industry, he going up against five of them at, at one time. You heard me? Cat Williams. We shouldn't even we shouldn't even call him Cat. We're gonna call him Lion Williams. You heard me? We're gonna call him Panther Williams. We call him Jaguar Williams. He's going up against all these heavyweights at once. Remind me of the big homie. You dig? That's how I like my beef. We're gonna smoke. Let's let's get all the smoke. This man then came at Steve Harvey's top. He says, Look, bro, you just a knockoff hanging with Mr. Cooper. And shout out to the old heads, know what I'm talking about. I was like, you a knockoff hanging with Mr. Cooper. And in addition to that, you wore a mean ass wig that had us thinking you had the boosty fade lineup when in actual fact it was turbo fake. What? BBMLD out here. In unit. Then you ask it, why you not a movie star? I didn't want to be a movie star. This the same Negro that hated on Bernie with this same thing. 
I didn't want to be a movie star. No, you couldn't be a movie star. Mm. There are 30,000 new scripts in Hollywood every year. Not one of them asked for a country bumpkin black dude that can't talk good over cable and look like Mr. <laughs> Potato Head. There ain't none. What? You would have to have a range. What? 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 Did this man say there's 30,000 movie scripts? Not one of them asked for a country N word that can't talk good. God damn. He said this ball is country, plus he got learning difficulties. He has not mastered the English language. Oh, my Lord. Cat, cat filleting him right now. He frying and filleting, man. I'm going to let him cook. I played a lot of characters, 60 movie roles. I'm not playing Cat Williams in there. I don't know. I don't know, Cat. We might not let you drink anymore the way you, you, I mean, we ain't got. I'm not fueled by alcohol. I've had a sip less than you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, shout out to uh, Shay Shay. You know, he might be one of them brothers that end up putting on a dress calling yourself Shay Shay. But hey, that's neither here nor there. I don't know what the hell was wrong with his mama. What kind of black mama named you Shannon? Might name you Tyreek, Tyrone, Tyquan, any of the ties, but they ain't gonna name you Shannon. That's curious. I don't know what kind of black mama he got. But um, you see, Cat Williams is sharp and quick witted, really, the definition of quick witted. And it's his ability to articulate and hit people with those zingers straight away. No one can match him in that. Maybe the big homie, but no one can match him. And you see, when he gets going, whoo, he's an unstoppable train, a train of truth, <laughs> a train of humor. And, you know, Shay Shay, I think, realizes that he's getting good value for his podcast because you got Cat on there going off the same way I went on a whatever podcast and went off. So he's getting good value. But it's rare that you hear someone tell truth at this level. So you're always going to see that discomfort from the interviewer or the host. And as much as those who are in the position of being a host or an interviewer, these are often the personalities that are mild, right? That are palatable. And that's why they can be a good host because their personality is not too strong such that it might overwhelm others who are there to, you know, it's going to outshine the person being interviewed, right? So, of course, he's kind of like, whoa, Cat, you getting lit. He's like, bro, you got to lay off the drink. You're turning up. And Cat is like, look, man, it ain't the drink. I'm high on life, man. I'm really like this. And that's why Cat is different because he has that energy. And that's what I've had my whole life. And as much as I don't drink or use drugs, I encourage you guys not to do it either way uh, as well. Because here's the thing. Why do people consume intoxicants? Get that energy up. Get that confidence up. Do you know that you can be as confident or more confident without it? But it has to come from here. It has to be you. That's the beautiful thing about Cat is that he's already lit. He's like, bro, I had less to drink than you. I'm really like this. I really want the smoke, and I'm speaking from my heart. Shout out to Cat. I'm just saying I can't let these dudes lie. Cedric's sitting here telling you why he ain't a movie star. He over here look like a walrus. You didn't say nothing. He can't even get his arms off his stomach sitting over here. Why I'm not a movie star. What? It's a situation. We never wrote anything. Remember, when Cedric the Entertainer starts, he's supposed to be singing, dancing, and telling jokes. That's why he's called the Entertainer. Right. We found. Bruh. Did. Did he just say this man is a walrus, can't get his damn hands, can't get his arms off his stomach? Did he just suggest that Cedric the Entertainer, Entertainer is a fat ass T Rex? <laughs> it's beautiful. Go ahead. Craig says, tuition, happy new year, and peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. Well, he didn't call this man a fat. He didn't. I said he's a fat ass T Rex. That's me. But essentially, he said this man can't get his arms off his. I'm done. We have Solomon just purchased a master communicator course. Shout to Solomon. I look forward to seeing you in the course. Found out he can't sing, can't dance, Damn. and doesn't he's write doing jokes. The he Damn. did four comedy specials. They're so bad, Shannon. They're not available on Netflix or Tubi. Can I ah! Ah! Did he bring up Tubi? He said you didn't make it to Tubi. Oh, that's disrespectful. But low-key, we should see if we can get something published on Tubi. Can you look into the requirements for that? I feel like I want to do a stand-up bit. Put it on Tubi. Why not? That's crazy. And one thing I must concede, I've been to a Cedric the Entertainer show. I've been to many shows. I'm very fortunate and thankful. And I, I saw that show in Cincinnati, and it was terrible. God damn it, I didn't laugh one time. You remember that? Yeah, okay. That man was not funny. Mm -hmm. And I love to laugh. I'm one of those guys. I'm, I'm the easiest 
audience member in a stand-up comedy uh, place because I, I show up to laugh. You heard me? I show up to laugh and have a good time. I don't think I laughed one time. I was in there with the stank face on. Like, I was constantly smelling shit. Can I say that yeah. again for the audience? Go ahead. They're so bad that they're not available on Netflix or Tubi. Damn. You don't think they have a good, a, a good comedian? The world doesn't think that, sir, I have 12 comedy specials. He has four specials that are not available on Netflix or Tubi. It seems to me, Kat, that you had a lot to get off your chest. No, no. You wanted to say the record screen. Winners are not allowed to allow losers to rewrite history. I don't say any of these things. If Look, you know what I like about Kat? I interviewed recently, you guys may have seen that interview um, where my celly, my cellmate came through and we we're having some frank conversation and he dropped a gym. One of the gems is that he said, the truth is not bragging. You hear me? The truth is not bragging. And I respect Kat for just setting the record straight saying, hey, this is what it is. And you might have silly people who might say, oh, Kat is hating. Now the facts are the facts. I often hear this common uh, pseudo logic you know, it's a specious argument. People say things like, if you're the best, you don't have to say you're the best. Ah, no, 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 that's not accurate. You see, Michael Jordan, he said he was the best. And turns out he was the best. Um, Floyd Mayweather, he said he was the best and turns out he was the best. Yeah, actually, sometimes you do need to let it be known. Why? Because we got liars out here. We got people out here pretending to be things that they're not. So when you're the genuine article and there's a lot of people masquerading as you, you need to let them know, like, hey, this is the real deal right here. Yeah, all that other stuff, that's GMO. This is the organic. So let me let that be known. If you're the best, there's nothing wrong with saying you're the best if you can deliver the goods. And shout out to Kat. Man has delivered the goods on a consistent basis. Shout out to Mohammed Ali. He said, I'm the greatest. And he is. Shout out to Money Mayweather. Said, I'm the best ever. And he is. Shout out to Jordan. He said, I'm the best ball player on the planet Earth. And he is probably in the universe. I ain't been to Mars yet, but I don't think they're going in like that. Okay? Um, Carrying on. We have, and correct me if I'm saying this wrong, please, but Kaut sent $50 on Cash App. Baller alert. It's a piece to the Saints tuition. Shout out to the real ones. This OJ is delicious. And by the way, shout out to the bosses and ballers that drink your OJ out of these right here. Uh, we need to go two glasses next yes, time. That was delicious. We have Giuseppe said, do you think, please, women should have equal rights opportunities? I ask because I see around the world, like in Afghanistan, Iran, women are oppressed and even killed for expressing self-determination and freedom. And number one, when you say should women have equal rights slash opportunities, should they have equal opportunities? Generally speaking, yes, they should. Uh, will the equal opportunity yield to an equal outcome? No, it won't. Um, so should women have the opportunity to apply to be a judge? Uh, yes, they should have the opportunity to be in the judiciary. Uh, should they be there? Probably not. Um, are they likely to achieve that at the same rate as males? Probably not. Um, but they should have the opportunity to pursue it. Why? Because you always have outliers. You have some women that are uniquely qualified for certain things, but on average, they're mostly not. Um, with regards to Afghanistan, Iran, I would not state that the women are oppressed. They have a different culture. You see, just as you would use a pejorative to suggest that those women are oppressed or something you might look down upon in their culture, they have things that they would look down upon in our culture. Uh, so, you know, really that's a subjectivity. So I would not consider either of those groups of women to be oppressed. And Iran actually has a fine society. They have a remarkably strong economy considering the level of sanctions that America has put on them for quite some time. They have extraordinary levels of technology, which we see in their ability to support the Russian war effort. It's quite a remarkable pariah state in as much as they've survived against the might of the West and all of the sanctions that the United Nations could muster. So quite impressive. And then the Afghan people, the Pashtuns in particular, uh, really impressive in as much as they've been able to outperform militarily the American government, which has a military budget that is unprecedented in world history. The American uh, military, the American industrial complex, has expanded uh, with in excess of 200 bases throughout the planet Earth. And the fact that they were beaten by a ragtag bunch of Pashtuns in Afghanistan is quite remarkable. It shows the, these people have a respect for their, 
their homeland and their culture, and they have been able to uh, overcome uh, basically a colonial force. And you know, culture is a is a subjective matter. Um, and so I'm not going to look down upon their culture. I think they actually have a lot of things that are going to be uh, bear fruit for them. You know, women being good mothers bears fruit in the society. You know, when you're when you have a good mother, you have good offspring. They're less inclined to commit crimes. They're more inclined to, you know, do the good things that benefit the society. Whereas today in the West, where the women are not oppressed, what do we see? High rates of divorce, high instances of mental health issues, high instances of people offing themselves. America has the highest rate of incarceration around uh, compared to every other country on the planet Earth. So clearly there are a lot of things that are wrong in the society today. Um, so long story short, yes, women should have the same opportunities for jobs and, and the like. Um, I don't think we should ensure equal outcomes. And certainly the women of Afghanistan and Iran are not oppressed. They are managed appropriately. Uh, and you can see what happens when you don't manage women. You have only fans. You have women being extraordinarily promiscuous, causing disruptions. You have women uh, using their bodies to advance in the workplace. And then they turn around and hashtag me too, great men and begin to destroy the society. So yes, they need to be managed. If my name is not breached by these people on your platform, then if you give the, a liar a platform to lie, mm. then I, I'm not being messy by saying, hold on, that never happened. It's untrue. And there are hundreds of witnesses for each thing I'm saying. So let me ask you this. What is your relationship with Steve Harvey, Ricky Smiley, and Cedric the Entertainer as you sit here currently? They for 30 years, they're a group. These aren't three random guys. The way that Ricky Smiley kept appearing. This boy Cat is a genius. He's pointing out things that should be obvious, but are not quite obvious. He said, hey, that's a group. They're, they're operating in confederacy against me. He's right. They are a group, which means they have similar traits as individuals. They might have a similar agenda. Birds of a feather flock together. Consider this. When I point out to you guys, you have Mo Lestiny, the blue-haired booty bandit, Skittle Guzzler, admitted. Then you have uh, Sneeko, friends with the blue-haired booty bandit. Maybe he guzzles Skittles too. We heard stories of him letting his lady sleep with another guy while he was on the same bed. That's weird. Huh? And then we see them all are also friends with Adolf 22, also known as Adam 16. And he is a guy who lets his wife sleep with other men with him. That's weird. So they're a group. They're together. Do you not think that they all engage in the same behaviors? I don't have any male friends that take it up the backside. So why would Adolf 22, why would Sneak Ho, why would BBMLD all be friends with the blue haired booty bandit if they don't agree with it or condone it? Huh? So Cat points out a meaningful fact, which is these people are a group. They're together. They're the same. Huh? We have Jamil just on Here. Ross University. Shout to Jamil. He's going to join. He's a smart man because he, he got it at a deal. And at all of my auditions is because of Steven said he would tell anybody that, listen, they got a gang on that side. They know what it is. They know who the gang is. Why Earthquake not in movies? Because he's illiterate. He oh. can't read. Whoa, and they found whoa. that out when they gave him a show and put the cards in front of him. Like all of these dudes are co-entwined and they share secrets. And this is the age of truth. And, and, and the truth doesn't need to be scared of the fact that people tell lies. Uh, cats on drugs. Where are the stories? Why is there no story of anybody who ever sold a drug to me, did a drug with me, was around me when I was inebriated? I got five daughters. I got five. Listen, this ball is dangerous, man. This ball is dangerous. And the more I ascend, we're not talking about money. We're just talking about notoriety. The more I ascend, the more people know my name and my voice, the more things get funny. So number one, I don't trust anything nowadays. You dig? Oh, I don't trust anything because I see how people, if they favor you, they'll lie on your behalf. And if they don't favor you, if they dislike you or hate you, they'll make up things about you. I don't trust anything. I find it hard to trust the Bible. 
Why? Because it's written by human beings. And I can now see when people admire you, oh man, they create tall tales or they protect you. They, they create a, 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 a wall of lies to protect you. So I don't trust anything nowadays. I'm extraordinarily suspicious nowadays because I've seen how human nature actually is. Cat has a meaningful point. I mean, just imagine, in my case, it's been well known my entire life. I've never drank a single drop of alcohol, never used drugs one time, not one time ever for any reason. And then I get pulled over by the police and they hit me with what? A DUI word. And for those of you uh, who follow my other channel, The Saint, um, you can see I had my own video camera. I was recording myself. You can see me as clear as day, sober as all get out. But still, they hit me with a completely false fraudulent charge. So now I see the wickedness is just, it, it's, it's unimaginable. And when the haters, when the results come back and it is negative, the haters are still going to find something else to hate about. To lie about, yeah. And the thing is, you brought this to the public's attention. Like Correct. You could have hidden it. No one would ever have known that it happened. That's but right. you are standing true on what you believe in and you were sober. Absolutely. And I brought it to the public's attention because it's not going to smear my reputation. My reputation is pristine and has always been. I brought it to the public's, uh, uh, the public's view because I want everyone to see how extraordinarily wicked this government is, that I would get pulled over and hit with a DUI charge while sober. Like, that's crazy. And you guys know I just finished going live. It was 10 p.m. in Las Vegas. I just finished the live session at 10 p.m. I got arrested at like 11 something. So you're telling me that in the space of me leaving my office and driving home while talking to my mother and my old lady on the phone that I got high and drunk during that time? By the way, it, it actually initially they said I was drunk and then they changed it and then said I was high. And you can they won't release the body cam footage. We requested it and they said that they won't release it because it's an ongoing investigation. Yeah. Wouldn't be surprised if they're doctoring up that body cam footage. It's worth noting there were four police officers there. So there should be four different sets of body cam footage. But I want that to be known publicly. And here's the sad part. We are in such a wicked society that I have to be concerned with if they're tainting the results of the, the blood draw. That's the sadness of the society. The only good news is that we have enough advanced science that we can go back and figure out you know, how they would have done it. And I will spend whatever it takes because the truth will be known. Okay, on I'm so we have Urban says, peace to the saints tuition. Peace to the saints. And on PayPal, we have Kendall came in. He said, tuition for this great analysis and the live about being black and not liberal. Right. Can we do a member's live on setting goals and an action plan for the assassin as a unit? We will build power by pulling in the same direction and weed out any snakes in our midst. Peace to the saints. We definitely do have some snakes in our midst, no doubt. And, and we, that will always be the case. Why will we tell these ridiculous stories? Because it's competition. You you feel like, well, why comedy, comedy guys can't just get along? Yes. Why, why, why didn't you get along with the other teams you were competing against? Mm -hmm. If you're a Denver Bronco, why you don't get along with the Cowboys? Something wrong with you? But I don't disagree. I don't no, disagree. No, all the no. Cowboys, cat damn, you like Denver. No, that's okay, not. What comedians do you did like? Did you play against the team? Yes. I've taken 46 comedians with me on the road, 46. Okay. Look, I wanna break down the, the relevance of this piece. Uh, one thing we have to understand is that life involves competition. You're always gonna be in competition. Sometimes it's honorable competition. Sometimes it's not honorable competition. Like for example, uh, Fresh and Fit and I, we are friends and we both are in the same space. So at some level, yeah, we're in competition, but we also collaborate, we're collegial, and there's mutual respect there while striving together. I believe the Latin of competition is, or, or compete is cum impetus, which is to strive together, which is what we're doing. You know, there's no negativity, hate, jealousy, or animosity. Then there are others in the space that there's competition, but it's ruthless competition because there's hate, jealousy, and envy. And this is often going to come from those who are your inferior, right? So consider this. You have BBMLD, which is a nobody. So there's no need to say, who is that? If you don't know, it doesn't matter. But he's a guy who's teaching a course on communication and on confidence. Well, how could you possibly teach a course on communication and confidence if you don't communicate well and you have no confidence? Can a man be said to have true confidence if he feels the need to behave like a Colombian whore, which is to say he's buying hair plugs, 
He's getting uh, surgery to reshape his jaw. They're getting no surgery. They're wearing women's makeup to make their eyebrows darker. And they get a, a male a BBL to create fa fake abs rather than working out and showing true discipline. How could you teach men confidence when you yourself don't have confidence? You're, you're trying to give something that you don't have. It's impossible. So in that case, if he teaches a course on confidence and communication and I teach a course on confidence and communication, he knows that inherently my course is better because it's authentic. It's coming from someone who really lives it, who really is what he says. And the reason that you can tell is when you see me in the face of my enemies, you see me as confident, as brazen, as aggressive as you see me when I'm in an empty room talking to you on a camera. Yes, when I'm in an empty room talking to you on a camera, I am very strong. And then when you see me in a room filled with people, filled with women, I'm the same strong man. You see me in a room filled with my enemies, I'm the same strong man. That is true confidence. You cannot fake that. So how could a guy BBMLD uh, try to portray confidence? And we saw when he was on a one-on-one -on -one call with me, not even in person, I broke him down like a Kit Kat, broke him apart like Legos, you dig? So these persons... They're jealous because they know they are inferior and their product is inferior. So all they can do to compete is to lie. That's why you will see that. And I think Kat's point, which he might not be saying as sharply, is that, you know, he has more talent. And he's more clever than a Ricky Smiley or a Steve Harvey or an Earthquake. So as a result, all they can do is detract because when you measure up against measure their products up against his product, theirs will always be inferior. Carrying on. I'm not the comedian you can give that to. I only put on comedians that are funnier than me. Anybody that ever told you differently. Ooh, that was deep. Now, now you see why I respect Kat. We're, we're very much so on the same wavelength. Just earlier, I said, you know, if I see somebody dripped, the <laughs> first thing I'm going to say, bruh, you killing them out here. I'm going to show respect and appreciation because I've always been the guy that's the cleanest one in the room. When I see another guy that's clean, I admire it because I can identify with him. I don't see him as an enemy. I see him as someone that's like me. Cat Williams, true confidence. He said, I brought 40 some comedians on the road with me and I only brought comedians who are more funny than I am. That's when you're a real player in the game, you dig? You see me, I love the game so much. I love to see guys spit game. You heard me? That's how much I love the game. I'm a real player in the game. Yeah, man, there's been times I've been out with my old lady. I remember one time in particular, I was in Philly with my old lady. I go to the bathroom. I come back. Cat had to wait till I go to the bathroom, start spinning game at her, which is like, which is real weak. But when I get back, I'm like, bro, nah, go ahead, man. Kick that game. I want to hear what you got. You ain't going to win, but go ahead, man. Kick that game. I love the game. You see, that's how much confidence I have. And that's how much confidence Cat has because he knows he's good at what he does and he's meant to do what he does. He's a real man. Shout out to Vlog supporting the work. Appreciate you. Was a fat phase on liar. There's nobody yeah, like you? me in the business. Faison just called straight. Faison said that getting a Netflix special is easy. I have 12 specials. Guess how many Faison got? Zero. Mm. So Why is he allowed to have conversations about real stand up people? We do not let people who are on the juice discuss real athletes. That's all. As a journalist. That's all. That's all I'm saying. Okay. I don't have harbor any resentment to any of these entities because I can't be jealous. I've never seen them have anything that I ever wanted. If you sign up for their program, you get a light skin. Look, this ball catching bodies. Listen to me, man. It's like my boy went Rambo on the whole industry. No respect. I love it. I love it. He has a great point about Faison Love. Faison's funny, uh, but he also is a tremendous hater. And it's not surprising. I often remind you all that if someone is uh, ugly and or broke, they're, they're, they tend to be wicked, right? Because they, they have that jealousy, that natural jealousy. Faison is particularly comical because he's supposed to be a stand-up comedian, but he doesn't do any stand-up. So as Kat says, why does he get an opinion? He doesn't count. And the even more ironic part is that Faison Love is critical of a Cat Williams, and Cat Williams is really outside doing the damn thing as a legitimate practitioner in that field. 
Similarly, I find it strange that you got all these people with courses. I heard one nerd on the internet was like, oh, Marquette has a course. It makes perfect sense. I'm the only person on the internet that's actually a trained teacher. This is actually my career. I am a trained teacher. Furthermore, I'm the only person online that teaches courses that has expertise in what I'm teaching. You hear me? I'm the only person who's invited consistently to university campuses and they write the check. We're talking top 20 universities. Write the check for me to teach to graduate students. I'm the only one. So it's like, can you guys be critical of me giving university level education? That's what I'm actually professionally trained and compensated to do. You guys are rascals. And you guys would have noticed, like, for example, BBMLD, it was comical when we were on a live session like this. I said, hey, before you did YouTube, who were you? Before you did YouTube, what was your expertise? And he couldn't say anything because he was nothing and nobody before YouTube, which is to remind you guys, if someone's first go in terms of being successful is being a YouTuber, I wouldn't trust them because the only thing they can actually teach you to do is to become a YouTuber, which is hard, nearly impossible. It damn near a bit of it involves luck. Let's be real. So if they're trying to teach you something other than how to be a good YouTuber, I don't trust them because they're making up stuff. They don't have experience. Huh? We have Teddy Fresh came in on Cash Talk with Teddy you. Fresh. I already knew it was going to be a baller alert. Okay. He said, in my Eddie Murphy voice, what is that velvet? Huh. Shout out to Eddie. And Eddie, Eddie is one of them boys. He's one of them pioneers in that comedy thing. You heard me? You caught up? Thank you, Eric. For the Shout out to Eric, indeed. You caught up? Yeah. Okay, wake up for me now. Weird face wife that never do an interview. Oh, man, come on. Listen. Wait, I got to rewind that. It sounded like he was getting real disrespectful. Go ahead, cat. Disrespect these balls. I can't be jealous. I've never seen them have anything that I ever wanted. If you sign up for their program, you get a light skin. Weird face wife that never do an interview. Oh, man, in Listen, in 20 years, won't do an interview. Nobody's ever talked to her and they, she's never been. Wait, I don't know who, who is bro talking about, but when you start mentioning people's wife, you are getting into that. That um, By the way, did you guys hear my sound effects? Your boy trying to get on the sound effect train. But um, when you start talking about people's wife, you want the smoke. You're down for the fade. And look, Kat is just like me because... You know, when I start talking about Adam's wife and his kids, to me, that's like, look, I'm telling you that I want the fade and I'm going to take that fade because I went overboard and I already know it. And I did it on purpose. I'm like that. So when I pulled up on Brody, I was like, let's take that fade. Oh, you didn't want that fade? Cool. Because I was I was gunning for it. I was, you hear me? I was coming for it. And Kat, he didn't went overboard. He didn't start bringing people wife. He get into that level of disrespect where you got to take that fade. You got to take that fade now. Wee. And interviewed anywhere. And now, understand, I'm not talking about one Did person. What I just effect? told you applies to no, seven no, people. Okay. They How they all up. end up with that. That's part of what you get. I came in this business saying I was going to expose. When I talked about Michael Jackson, when I talked about R. Kelly, they canceled me for these things because why would you talk about another black dude? Race is not wow. where the line is drawn. Wow. If God said, Bruh, you're right. I got to get cat on because you hear him saying the things I've been telling you guys for a long time. I always reminded you that, you know, you'll find people that are skin folk, but they not kin folk. You heard me? Like, for example, Lil Nas X, he black, but I for sure don't identify with him. Tyler Perry, he's black, but I surely don't identify with him. So, so the skin does not point to a specific ethnicity, culture, and folk ways that are all shared nowadays. Now we have different religions, etc. So you really need to be hyper-focused about identifying with people that share your values. And he just pointed to the same thing. And you hear ignorant blacks nowadays, they say things like, oh, you can't talk about another black man. Why? <laughs> Why? Some of these black men need to be put in line. You dig? Some of them are problematic. Hell, some of them need to be put in line. Some of, some of them need to be put out of, uh, you hear me, put out of commission, if you know what I'm saying. So until we can properly regulate affairs within the black community, I can't sign off on like being a group like that because there's some too many weirdos in the group. You dig what I'm saying? So he's spinning some real ism right now. And I just want to remind you guys, only the dumb, low class, low intellect black folks say things like, oh, you can't talk about another black man. Yes, you can. 
And in some cases, you need to, because we still trying to figure out where's Dr. Umar's school at? I mean, goddamn. And I donated money too. Where the school at? Yeah, I, I met him and had conversations in Baltimore. Where the school at? I want to know just because I donated money. That's all. Now, I tell you, if I didn't, I wouldn't be in his business. But it turns out it's my business at this point now, isn't it? And the other side. And we don't care nothing about the other side. Period. Period. All Boy, of these period, like uh, big dick deviants is all catching hell in 2024. It's up for all of them. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is. <laughs> T.D. Jakes, any of them. Oh. All, every, all lies will be exposed. That's all. And, and, and anyone who takes that the wrong way know why they take it the wrong way. The truth is the light. And they have no more of these. Amen, amen. Gee. <laughs> It wouldn't be right if I didn't point out that it is a, a, a bit strange to hear these brothers say amen. Now, granted, he was he was really talking that church, but I don't know if you need to say amen and then drink a shot of cognac, you know what I mean, and then just start sipping the bourbon right after. I don't know if that's quite right. And that's one of the challenges I have to many Christians is that, you know, it's like, how are you really living? There was a woman uh, that just tried to engage me on Instagram talking about like, you're such a misogynist and blah, blah. I was like, look, lady, you're in your 40s and you're not married. You're you screwed up and you put Jesus in your um, in your bio. But you just told me that you hate patriarchy. Every religion is patriarchal. So you fundamentally don't understand your religion. Most Christians don't Hell, Most Muslims don't practice either. But I always challenge people before you start preaching that that good word to everybody else, preach it to your damn self. You heard me. And when Muslims want to give dawah and try to convert other people to the faith, I said, well, why don't you get the Muslims to behave like Muslims first before you start trying to get the non-believers, the kufar? Why don't you get the Muslims to act like Muslims? Why don't you engage in dawah within the ummah? Why don't you clean up your house before you start trying to walk into other people's house? That's the problem is we're so damn arrogant and narcissistic that we want to feel like we converted somebody. We want to feel we persuaded somebody when you can't even persuade your own self to live a virtuous life. That's why in Boston University, I say the fundamentals of it are first become a boss of yourself. What? Yeah. First, become a boss of yourself before you try to boss around other people. If you can't become a boss of yourself and make yourself wake up early in the morning, you can't be boss of yourself enough to get yourself to exercise every day. You can't be boss of yourself enough to make you clean up your diet. How dare you try to be boss of someone else? Arrogance, delusion, sickness. Okay, uh, Go ahead. We have warrants of peace to the saints, respect and blessings to the saints. Peace to the saints. Okay. Kind of <clears throat> get on here. All right. After <laughs> that, I don't really kind of know where to go. Let me one more time. <laughs> <laughs> mm, mm. Right. We good now? Because the people want to know why would he get blackballed? Yeah. Oh, because, I was because, that. because. Listen to this. Not listen, but observe this. You may have already observed this. Do you notice that Cat Williams don't even need uh, Shay Shay there? He don't even need him there. You hear me? This is the Cat Williams show right now. This is not Shay Shay show or whatever they call it. This is the Cat Williams show right now. He don't even need Shannon Sharp there. He just going off. That ball got brains, first rate brains. And he's pushing out his own agenda. He's saying what he came there to say. He's not responding to questions. He's setting the agenda. That's what a boss does. But that's what happens when you go in with goals and then you execute. Now, Shannon Sharp is reacting like average human beings react. He's overwhelmed. He's at a loss for words. He doesn't know what to say. He's basically overwhelmed by Kat's intellect, sharpness, and wit. It happens. You see, often when we encounter these rare beings who are just so extraordinarily talented, articulate, strong. They're heroes in the flesh in front of us. We don't know how to deal with them. For the haters that say you need to upgrade your earphones, here's one pair of your headphones and you also have other earphones. Yeah, yeah. Too. I mean, this is silliness, right? But here's the thing. Thank you. Uh, here's the thing. 
I do have wired headphones for a number of reasons. I also have AirPods. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you can see my AirPods. If for some strange reason you want to see that, but let, let's talk what's real here. Um, and I want to remind you guys, the wicked will always come with lies, lies. I remember in my job, I, I, for a long time, tried not to show my life intentionally because I don't want hate. I don't want the government agencies to be looking into my personal affairs. I want to be low key. But just imagine you have people who used to say, um, would you mind taking this dish away? Thank you. No, I don't want the other dish. Um, you have haters who used to say, oh, you know, that car is rented. Word. Um, well, how long I've been renting it? They say these things and they make up things because they're broken, jealous. I mean, we want to talk about AirPods, right? If if I need AirPods, I can buy AirPods. What are we talking about here? Huh? And for those of you who know this currency, you could tell by the color uh, what it is. I'm different. Don't play. I don't have to play games. Like if I want to wear the oldest headphones on earth, just respect it. You heard me? Just respect it. And just assume he's wearing those AirPods or those headphones because that's what he want to do. Listen to me. I'm in a custom velvet suit, okay? Listen to me. I'm in a custom tuxedo shirt. You heard me? You don't see nobody in a tuxedo shirt unless they finna get married. This is handmade, custom. How do we know? Because my, my logo is right here. That's how we know. My, my initials are stitched right there. My life is good. I mean, it's just stop with the silliness here, folks. Like, why even waste your time? If you have eyes, you can see I'm solid. So don't waste time, please, please. I mean, come on now. My cars, just my cars, cost more than all of your houses. I'm talking to the haters. Just real quick, I just want to take out that break. Talk to the haters, you did? What do we, listen, you're in your mom's basement. I'm in a foreign country again. I got so many trips on my IG highlights. You, you got to swipe through like nine times. I've been everywhere. What are we talking about? Listen to me. I got a guest bathroom that has an electronic bidet with a massage feature on it. You heard me? I don't even know what it does. Does it massage your butt cheeks? I've been scared to click the button. Someone said wearing the same blades on the last three shows. You're traveling. Right. And obviously watching you. <laughs> right. And I shout out to the haters because it's, it's, it's weird. It's like a fatal attraction. You know, it's like <laughs> the, the, the work is so good. The product is so good that they got to watch. That, that's amazing. So they got to watch but they hate at the same time. This is mental illness. Now, one thing I will tell you is absolutely I've been wearing the same blazer because it looks good. And also it makes it easier for people to recognize me. So let me uh, help you guys out. This is a blazer I wore on the Whatever Podcast. The Whatever Podcast, I've done 100 million views. Yeah, between all the clips, done about 100 million views in this very blazer. So I wear this very blazer, and then when people see the thumbnail or they hover over the video, it pops up in this blazer. They see the bald head lover, the, the iconic bald head, you dig, with the freckles, black guy with the freckles, and the red blazer. They're like, ah, I remember that guy. Ah, then they click. It's called face rec uh, facial recognition. Uh, familiarity. It helps. But more importantly, I'm traveling. And more important than that, let me teach you guys something. This is a top layer, right? You need to change your undergarments every day. The capitalist machine has tricked you imbeciles into feeling like you have to constantly consume. You have to constantly buy. You got to change clothes every day. What you might not be aware of is that's actually a fairly new thing. That's in recent human history. Prior to that, cleanliness, you change your undergarments. You shower every day. And your outer garment is the same. If you look back in American history, even you see Americans used to wear suits every day until denim became popular. What is denim? Denim is a workman's material. You, you dig? A player really shouldn't even be in denim. That's a workman's material for like miners and guys like digging coal or digging for gold and minerals. That's a workman's material. You dig? So the world has changed and capitalism has taught you to go and consume constantly and to buy ill-fitting clothes. That, that's why we have these baggy styles and all these styles where the clothes don't fit right because you're buying mass produced clothes. Me, I'm wearing my own clothes that I produce that make me money and spread my reputation. And it's an outer layer and I'm completely engaging in proper hygiene. I re recommend it. And here's a funny, ir ironic thing. You know, clothes are, it's a vanity, right? It's a vanity. But I got, sadly, and this is an embarrassment to me because I prefer to be a minimalist, but I got more clothes than anybody on the live session. And that's embarrassing. That's not a, you, that's not a bragging. I'm embarrassed. That's stupid. But why do I have more clothes than everyone on here? 
because I manufacture clothes. So I always buy them to try them on and make sure that it's A1 quality. So I have way more clothes than anyone on here. And that's embarrassing to me. I'm honored and I'm happy with myself when I can wear the same clothes consistently. I don't find that to be embarrassing at all. I find it embarrassing if I have to get in a Toyota, you hear me? I'd rather get in the back of one of my Rolls Royce, get in the back of my Maybach, get in the back of my car where the doors go up like this, or go to one of my properties. Like That's when I'm flossing on you, you hear me? When I'm trying to buy land abroad, that's when I'm flossing. And right now I'm trying to get this car. It's called a Bufori, you dig? It's a beautiful automobile, hyper luxury, but you can't import them into the United States because they don't meet the regulations for the American uh, auto market. So as a result, I got to buy a foreign property, you hear me? And then have my Bufori shipped over there, you hear me? That's more what I'm interested in. But now back to the current topic, okay. if you don't mind. We have Nora said, I'm dying here, Saint. Get in your bag on these haters. In a real way, man. And thanks to Dana Malik for the support. And by the way, that was just the money I had right next to me. I could go grab a whole nother pouch of money and my money is gay. You hear me? My money in all colors like the rainbow. What are we talking about? You hear me? I just carry around. That, listen, that's just light work that I just have within arm's reach. We're not the same. Don't waste your time hating on me. It won't work. I could drop dead today and I'll, I will have accomplished more than you'll ever accomplish. Anthony, I could do nothing for the rest of my life and you still won't catch up. I really live like that, man. Anthony's in the cash lot. He said, loving this analysis. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Um, let me let me get back at you with that one. Okay. okay. All right. Carrying on. Because in 30 years, I've done nothing but collect information, knowledge, and your secrets. So if you and a man was in a corner doing something you wasn't supposed to be doing. You would tell it. No, somebody <laughs> come to tell me. Okay. I gather that. I value that. I'll pay for that. Come, tell me. I know so many things I shouldn't know, and they all know it. They all know it. Why? Because you don't make me the villain. Not the guy that raises black children and ain't never done a hard drug in his life and don't have no stories of doing nobody dirty. You heard that? See, it's the guy that's never done a hard drug that they say he's a drug addict. Why? Because he's an intelligent black man and is a speaker of truth. Uh, by the way, um, it's getting a little toasty in here being that I'm in the velvet. I'm going to adjust the temperature, if you don't mind, from this iPad. And by the way, I don't need anybody hating on me unless you can control your whole uh, home with your, with an iPad. Unless you can do that, I don't need you hating on me. You, you have bigger fish to fry. You have other priorities, honestly. <laughs> you have other priorities, trust me. That's the problem. People have their priorities in order. Come on now. And, and they'll just go out and they'll lie. The the industry doesn't mess with Cat because he didn't show up for the studio. No studios have ever said that. Look at my IMDb. It will show you that no studio has ever lost money with me on the script. How? That's why I'm saying that's why I can't let Ricky Smiley say he was supposed to play Money Mike because I wrote the words for Money Mike. I designed the hair for Money Mike. Listen, um... Shout out to the haters. I'm kind of enjoying them today. I'm like, I might go deeper into my bag floss and I really might. I collaborated with the wardrobe department and made outfits to make sure that no one in America would be wearing what Money Mike was wearing. I told them to go get the Prowler. I then told them to paint it purple. I told them don't have an actor at playing a pimp. We could get an actual pimp archbishop. Oh, uh, he said don't have an actor play the pimping. We can bring on the pampin. Listen, the true story. Um, if when you walk in your bathroom, if your if your your toilet doesn't open up to acknowledge your presence as a man, you don't need to be hating on me. Okay. When your toilet acknowledges you as a boss, then fuck with me. But before that, just shut up. All right. Just shut up. And you guys who've been following me a long time, there have been a number of times I've done tours for you guys, and you already see what, what I'm living like. If you guys have came to St. City for my uh, conferences, we do the conference, which is what you paid for. Then I take you out to some crazy penthouses that you ain't never seen nothing like it. If your toilet does not acknowledge you when you walk in the room, shut up. Go ahead. On cash up, we have William's tuition. Shout out to William. Aaron says, peace to the saints, tuition for the most supreme education. Yes, indeed. And Alfonso said, boss talk, peace to the saints. In a real way. And thank you, Barrett, for the Magic Yes, sir. The one to play. Like, I, 
I did far too much work for somebody to come years later and try to tag along just for their own self-aggrandizement. Why didn't Cube set the record straight? Terry Crews could have set the record straight. Mike Epps could have set the record straight. Wait, hold on. First off, shout out to the homie Mike Epps. Uh, and for all the haters, you can follow me on Instagram, just like Mike Epps, you dig? Shout out to the homie. Um, and drop my IG so that they got some more to hate on because it's my job, you hear me? I tell all of you guys, it's important that you do your job as a winner so that they can do their job as a loser. It's necessary for you to win so they can lose. They need somebody to lose to. Uh, but the funny thing is he mentions, well, why didn't Cube do this? Why didn't so-and-so do this? Remember, we're men. It's not always that people are going to come up and step up on your behalf. You got to step up on your own behalf. I highly promote that. And that's why I tell you guys, I love to hear you guys confident uh, because it's not always that other people are going to be your cheerleader or rally to your side, especially if they perceive you not to be in the strongest position. Now they're going to flee. You dig? But that's why you have to stand strong for yourself. Three sins Bible. Be yourself. Be good to yourself. Be good to yourself before you're good to anyone. You are the priority. Furthermore, what you talking about, Terry Crews? I'm wondering if Shay Shay is trying to set that up. Is he trying to set up Terry Crews to get flamed? Because Terry Crews couldn't stand up for his damn self getting his balls fondled by a fat old white guy. So how's he going to stand up for anybody else? That's one of the major lessons in my book, The Black Box. It is a guide to you for living in this day. In The Black Box, it tells you never stand up for a man who cannot stand up for himself. Mm. And then it gives you a whole narrative explaining why. Great. Why none of them set the record straight? That's what you were supposed to ask him when he told you those lies that but no I didn't one's ever heard. Lie. Right, but he's telling you something no one's ever heard of. Nobody has ever heard. Oh, Matt Aff Ben Affleck and Matt Damon was in a movie, and somebody said, Y'all should switch roles. And like, this is a business. But that's the thing, Cat. <laughs> but normally, when people are giving you information, I'm thinking. I I, you know, another thing that I find curious, I'm, I'm just like, yo, like, what is what's in that book that Shannon Sharp is holding? Like, because Sharp ain't asked that many questions. These are not very complex questions. Anyways, can somebody get this ball a teleprompter? I mean, come on now. You got the likes of a Cat Williams. I wish he was more like Larry Elder because Cat is smart and engaging. You can just have a conversation. You don't need them notes, bro. Just flow as a black man talking to another black man. I don't know why this seems to be rocket science over here. When he got here, have we heard of a comedian that came to L.A. and in his first year in L.A., he had his own sitcom on network television and had his own movie called Soul Plane that he was leading? No, we've never heard of that before that person or since that person. What do you think a plant? Wait, time out. Uh, did Cat Williams produce Soul Plane? Is that what he suggests? I don't know. But whoever was involved in Soul Plane, uh, I'm gonna need that fade. That was one of the worst movies I ever saw in my entire life. Did you see Soul Plane? I think so. Yeah, I think you had told me that. And I was shocked. I was like, "You've lost white points." How did you see Soul Plane? That was the most uh, low budget black movie on earth, but it was atrocious. You hear me? So whoever was responsible to Soul Plane, I think they took us back 200 years. We damn near went back to slavery. That movie was so bad. Um, so if Cat Williams was involved in that, uh, when you see him just sock him out. You heard me just sock him dead in his eye one time and just tell him, are we cool now? We even, that was for soul playing, carrying on. Oh, I'm gonna it is. This just because it's lower than the threshold, but okay. not haters. He writes, one joker in Destiny Circle said you were the chauffeur of the Maybach. Wow, that's amazing. My part-time job is as a chauffeur. <laughs> yeah. That's fascinating. Uh, no joke. These haters are getting desperate and jealous that a black dude can own stuff without slanging. Damn said I was the chauffeur in my own Maybach. Yeah. That's amazing. Okay. <laughs> the the uh, I mean, what is that exactly? I think he came out with additional yeah, shout out to what is that? That's crazy. You know, and the weird thing too, I realize that on the internet, a lot of these people they lie and they they believe that if they repeat the lies, they can make it true. So really they're trying to spin the narrative. It's just quite comical. We have Virus Beats said, peace to the saints. I'm new to your information for about two weeks now, and I feel fortunate to have come across the gems you drop. I'll be investing more often and becoming a regular in your brotherhood. I appreciate that, and we welcome you to this thing of ours. Maybe people don't understand the definitions of these words. He just did his documentary with Chris Rock where he shows you that his whole upbringing in comedy was on the East Coast.
Yeah, it was. So how simultaneously was he here in Los Angeles doing the same thing? It didn't happen. It didn't happen. And <laughs> I, I, I hate to seem like a petty individual for picking <laughs> apart lies. Yo, listen, the truth is the critical mind is very much so able to spot out inconsistencies and things that are faulty. And you may sometimes perceive, like, oh, this person's hating. Nah, they just point out the facts that are glaring to them, but perhaps invisible to you. And, and I respect that Kat is uh, speaking on this. And we have a lot of lies about. I mean, just imagine, someone said I was the chauffeur of my own Maybach. That's amazing. Hey. And that reminds me, I got so much content. I got so much stuff because I'm, I'm really living life out here. Remind me to um, get the video of when we went to go get it wrapped okay. and share that. I guess you the know. person sent you to pick all of the colors. Yeah, they, yeah, they, they did. Your style. Yes, they did. On Cash Out, we have Anthony is back with more tuition. Shout to Anthony. And Alfonso is back this time with $50. Baller alert. Is that I had to send the baller alerts. And shout out to the ballers. You, and that's how you feel. He said, I had to do it. And we have Ishmael, the mix I can, that, that's what it says. He got the creating and monetizing an app course. Oh, so very smart man. To the Absolutely. Device. Yeah. Um, remind me to do that as soon as we get off. Okay. But Jesse Smollett going to keep lying until you say, we don't believe you. Mm. Like it's important in the checks and balances of the universe <laughs> that liars not get to make complete narratives for themselves. Are you not afraid about being blackballed again? These Clearly are some not. powerful people. What do you mean again? These people are not powerful. Satan can't create anything. Now Cat about to get spiritual on you. Cat, who Cat is about to get. He about to take you up to a higher level. Like you thought you were at the mountaintop and he's like, all right, now let me levitate you off this mountaintop. Let me take you into the atmosphere real quick. Like you didn't know we, yeah, we could do that. We let me levitate you real quick. It's about to get spiritual. Buckle up, buddy. Uh, by the way, shout to the ballers. Baller alert. Prince of all sayings writes, tune in late and had to pause a few times. Tuition for the big homie. And shout out to Panther Williams for real. Yeah, I like the ring of that. Panther Williams carrying on. That includes blessings for his people. That's why, you know what the number one job of somebody that sold their soul in Hollywood is? What? Is to act like it didn't happen. They <laughs> all do the same job. <laughs> he said the number one job of someone who sold their soul is to act like it didn't happen. Yeah. That's deep. And I'm, I'm asking myself, how do we relate this to the YouTube sphere? Because the YouTuber of today is the celebrity of yesterday, right? So the celebrities of yesterday, if they became a celebrity today, they'd be on YouTube. They'd be the social media influencers. So if we're asking ourselves, how does the devil work through them or how does wickedness get spread through them? Maybe it's, you know, if they sold their soul, he said, act like it didn't happen. Or if they're doing things that are wrong and evil, act like they're not doing things that are wrong and evil, which is to say, act like the bad things are good things. Act like you're at off 22 and you're letting your woman sleep with many men, which we all know is disgusting, but act like it's normal. Or if you're sneako and you're in a threesome with your woman and another dude and his testes are on your forehead, act like that's normal and okay. Or if you're a fake Muslim throwing dirt on the name of Islam, act like you're a Muslim, but continue smoking cigars, drinking alcohol, engaging in indiscriminate sex, and act like that's the religion. Oh, I see. So you're deceiving the masses, showing them evil so they can emulate it, but acting like it's actually good. I understand, Kat. I understand. Aha. Uh -huh. Cash app, we have Daryl is back again. He Shout out to Daryl. Tip for chauffeuring your own Maybach, keep flossing. For real, though. You hear me? <laughs> and you know, truth be told, sometimes I do have a driver come in and drive the Maybach. And anytime I can, I try to put money in the pockets of Saints. So if we have Saints who drive Uber or they drive Lyft and I need them to chauffeur for or need a chauffeur for any reason, I'm going to pay one of you guys. One of the fans, one of the saints, I want to put money in your pocket. I've sent out in excess of $200,000 to you guys. And I don't have to lie about that because I know damn sure there's multiple people in this chat right now who have made money off of yours truly. Huh? Me promoting your products, me giving you product ideas. This watch, for example, shout out to St. Flo's. He's been selling this watch, which I design is in the, and is under my brand. And it's made him a whole bunch of money since that he's ready to take on a new product. Yeah. 
So we've done that a lot. And, you know, the deeds show and speak for themselves. And that's why I tell you, boys, you better quit messing with me because there are people whose lives I've changed and they won't stand for you putting dirt on my name. You hear me? Because they know what's real. Um. Why do you think Gary Owen can't cross over and he already white and been in comedy for 25 <laughs> years? If what I say ain't the case. Shout out to Gary. Saw it's a cabal. It's a Listen, uh, shout out to Gary Owens. He, he's a Cincinnati guy as well. Cat uh, is from Cincinnati. I've seen uh, Gary Owens in, uh, in the live in concert, live in theater, live. You know what I mean. Yeah, whatever. I was there in the Flizzash, good seats. Cat, I've actually never seen live. And so I look forward to seeing Cat live and I'll take that chance when I get it. Most everyone who's good, I've seen live. I've Did seen. Did I lose points for that too? For what? Seeing Knowing Cat. What, white points? Yeah. Nah, nah, he's okay. reasonably popular and he's from. Cincinnati. Yeah, yeah. Um, but shout out to all these very talented men. And I'm just so thankful that I've had a chance to pretty much see all of them. Like, and, and Kevin Hart included. And I actually am not a fan of Kevin Hart's comedy, I think it's a bit simple. And, and a bit immature, but the show I saw of him in Vegas was hilarious. I we're like two rows behind David Goggins. It was a good show. I think we have Source Energy Labs came in on Cash Up. He said, "What are your thoughts on executing the say KB Trust? Where are we? Created a birth under the UCC and bringing our personal assets back into the private ownership. Peace to the Saints." <laughs> okay, so number one. You have to be cautious anytime you're trying to execute on American law or American uh, regulations, knowing that they're flimsy and uh, are enforced inconsistently. So that's number one. Like, for example, some people people often like to talk about a trust. Oh, put this put this asset within a trust. Well, Missouri trust is the most reliable trust, but. Do we know that that's going to hold up against uh, you know federal issues or issues from another state? It's supposed to, but will it? Time will tell. Uh, furthermore, when we talk about private ownership, especially in America, uh, the moment you become categorized as a criminal, you don't own anything. Um, and uh, for that reason, the safest thing that you can do is to di diversify your assets, holdings, your cash reserves across multiple countries political systems. Um, and that is the only way, but the only true safety is in knowing that you have nothing and you own nothing. That's why all this material is nothing to me. I had the good fortune that I was born into poverty. I came into this world in poverty and I was comfortable in poverty. I didn't want to be in poverty, but I, I'm comfortable. I could deal with it. And I realized that spirituality is the only thing that gives you true stability, true peace, because everything that you have that is physical, it can be taken away from you. People can't take peace out of your mind. They can't take knowledge out of your mind. And so I encourage you all to hyper focus on that. Everything else can be taken away from you. Um, and if you're doing good in this world, surely everything can, uh, will be taken away from you, including your life. Okay, we have... Giuseppe sent $50. Baller alert. Is he trying to come out as the leading baller? Maybe. Is he saying like, all right, you guys are balling, but I'm different? Maybe. He said, I do support okay. women's rights in a reasonable manner and fashion that is appropriate to their biology. I hate feminism, yet I believe women should have equal opportunity and self-determination. Do crush feminism. We more mothers and wives. Agreed. Absolutely. Okay, we have Ray Gleason in came in $50. Baller alert. So tuning in late. In middle school, I experimented with hiding in plain sight. Mm. Told a friend, watch this, and talk shit in a normal tone of voice about someone next to us. He didn't notice it. Then I whispered it. The homie activated. Peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. We have Jabrizi. Oh. He, he's always sharing uh, deep things. And you know, that's one thing I like about uh, smart people is that they're able to make things simple. When people truly understand something, you can make it simple. That's how you know people don't understand something when they have to talk for a long time. It's a long, elaborate explanation. They don't really understand and they're trying to seem smart. True intelligence, you can make it simple. True talent, you make things look easy. When you watch Floyd Mayweather, you're damn near feel like you know how to box. You're like, oh, I could do that because he makes it look so easy. It makes it look effortless even though it's difficult and complex and requires extraordinary fast twitch muscles and many decades of experience. But that's the talent of a genius. Okay, we have Jabrizi came in and said, I was four rows behind David Goggins. I didn't know you were at the same show as Kevin. There you go. Shout on out. And PayPal, we have Miles said, peace to the saints. There was so and, and just real quick, pause. Like, 
low key, I need to be sitting in front of David Goggins if we keeping it a buck. So I got to upgrade next time. You're be how how'd I let that happen? Go ahead. Miles says peace to the Saints. There was so much game in your jail story, especially when mm. it comes to applying machine mode. Yeah, I started implementing machine mode at my job because this isn't my goal to work for someone else my entire life. Talk. I've noticed many people have big goals, but they quickly die due to the fact that they get too comfortable around mediocre people and Ooh. environments. Similar to jail, many things try to break you psychologically. Uh, you ain't lying. You ain't lying. It's a, it's a consortium. They they rock with who they My rock boy with, and they don't with who they don't. But I'm not scared of being the competition any more than you were when you lined up uh, uh, across from a superior team. Yeah, on paper, they're a better team. Right. They have all the assets and resources, and we don't. Go up. But let us get on the line, boy, boy. <laughs> this, this man is wild. Look at Midget Cat that pulled up on Shannon Sharp like he a DB. This is crazy. Um, listen, uh, shout out to Cat. And he speaks of an age old wisdom and confidence. This is the same thing you would have seen with a Napoleon Bonaparte. I don't reference Napoleon Bonaparte because he was of small stature. I reference him because he knew who he was. Remember, Three Sins Bible, be yourself, be good to yourself, be good to good people. Be yourself. Napoleon Bonaparte knew he was a boss, so he always operated like a boss. Others looking at him could not recognize that he was, in fact, a boss. So as a result, they treated him disrespectfully. They would talk behind his back. But eventually, he turned around and became the emperor of all France and much else. And because of that, then they treated him like a boss. But here's the, the key that you shouldn't forget. It took the outside world some time to catch up and start treating him like a boss. But he always behaved like a boss because he always knew he was a boss. He always had self-confidence and self-faith. Now, let me understand. Uh, help you understand something. I came into the game slapping helmets off. No respect. You dig? And I've spoken up on some figures that are very famous and well-known. And people try to side with that other figure thinking that he'd always be on top. But as you see me rise up steadily, you are going to see the position switch. You hear me? And similarly, you're going to see the bystanders. They're going to switch sides as well. And you're like, oh, yeah, I was always rocking with you. No, you weren't. I, I saw you weren't always rocking with me, but it's fine. And I went up against the ones you thought were the big dogs because I could look at them and tell they were not the big dogs. These is rascals. That's little buddy right there. These are rascals. So that's the same thing that you observe consistently in the sport of boxing. You see one guy gets in the ring. Like, for example, you got Benavidez and Canelo. Canelo is very popular. He's like, oh, he's a, mech. He's a monster. Like, Canelo, like, yeah, but Benavidez got the goods. So he's going to go up against Canelo, beat the brakes off him, and then now he's going to get all the respect. That's how it goes. But the key is that Benavidez knows that he's the real monster. Everyone else thinks it's Canelo, but Benavidez knows. Very few people can see. They look, but they don't see. Listen, average people, they look, but they don't see. Come on now. If that factors in, I, I guarantee you it won't. Wow. Because Shannon Sharp got to be a different person than that other person. Absolutely. And he always was. That doesn't change when I change teams. That remains the same. That's how a legacy is built. So all of these shortcut takers, I, I was. Yo, shout out to Kat for the Fendi drip. I, I see Fendi in many places. I don't know who buys the stuff because the store in my is always empty. Um, I personally don't like Fendi, but this is some decent Fendi drip. Do you like that? Yeah. Yeah, that's some cool Fendi drip. Usually I, I go in there, so I'm like, yo, this is what is going on in here. But shout out to Kat for the Fendi drip. Kat is the most tacky comedian, though. Like, for sure, uh, when I watch this boy's specials, it is extraordinarily tacky. I don't know if it's because he got to buy his clothes at Toys R Us. Uh, he got to shop in the kids, the baby gap section. I don't know if that's the reason why it's hard to buy clothes when you're a, a, a bite-sized man. Um, but the motherfucker tacky as hell. So I just want to shout out the drip because this is the first time Cat had any decent drip on. And I don't know what's going on with the perm underneath that beanie, uh, but I think we're probably all privileged that he's keeping it covered up. You dig? Uh, his perm game is inconsistent. Sometimes it goes well. Sometimes it goes real bad. Uh, what can you do? Go ahead. Okay, on PayPal, we have Jacinto sent $50. Shout out. Oh, wait. Baller alert. Wake up. 
Yeah. He said, salute Marquette. I'm new to your content. Much respect to you, sir. I appreciate that. And and I like how he showed up too. He said, I'm new, but I'm I'm a baller though. And we also on PayPal have Mitchell said, thank you for this. Peace to the Saints. Absolutely. Peace to the Saints. Is that St. White? It is. Shout out to St. White. They canceled me for talking about Harvey Weinstein before the thing came out, huh. but he offered to suck my penis in front of all my people at my agency. What am I supposed to ah, 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 He made me throw my breakfast. Oh, that's disgusting. Oh, that's nasty. And I'm like, is it nastier because he's ugly? <laughs> it's, oh, it's gross. Listen, um, Kat is pointing out something very meaningful, which is that intelligent people can see what's happening before it happens. Those who are uniquely gifted, like Copernicus, when you speak the truth too early, you are rejected and rebuked. Mind you, you're going to go back to my video catalog and be like, damn, Quet caught that all early. He caught out all these LGBTQ YouTubers in the manosphere early. He caught out all these beta male YouTubers, liars in the manosphere early. Wow, he was the first one to call out fill in the blank person I won't name for being a sucker early, for being a liar, a charlatan, a heretic early. But see, when you speak the truth too early, the masses are not ready to accept it. It takes time for them to accept certain truths. So they vilify you like they did Jesus or like the Koresh oppressed the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, or like they did Copernicus and, and many of the scholars, geniuses and truth sayers over the ages. The masses are not ready for the truth at a certain level. He just pointed out to you guys, he said, I spoke up on um, Harvey Weinstein speaking about true things, but it was too early before everyone else was doing it, before it was cool, before it was popular. I just did it because it was the truth. Everyone else joined the bandwagon. Then it's acceptable. Come on now. We have Orion and a cash app. Shout to Orion. Peace to the Saints. Peace to the Saints and shout to his whole family. Good people. And to the person, um, D, you were accidentally blocked. You can email the email at the bottom of the screen oh, you, and we can you, unban you. You got him accidentally blocked. It get like that. Yeah, send your YouTube URL. We'll take care of that. Please forgive us. What's to do? He did all of that. I'm thinking I'm the only black person on the script. I get there. There's three other black guys on there. Woo. Huh. So you wonder what they did to get it. <laughs> I told him no. What y'all do? <laughs> <laughs> now that's that's a good point Cat brings up. They probably told him yes. Or they let him fondle their balls like uh Terry Crews. You see, it is it should be no surprise that certain YouTubers are buddies with each other, they hang out together, they collaborate together. One thing you hear me speak about consistently, I speak against intoxicants. I speak against sexual deviants. You don't ever see me engaging in those things. You don't ever see those things on screen. You never observe it in my personal life on Instagram. I also tell you that sexual deviance is a great evil in our society today. These uh, Skittle guzzlers are kid groomers. They're child groomers. And you don't see me collaborating with them. You see me going against them. You need to be suspicious of anyone who would claim to be an alpha male, a savage, a beast, a masculine man, and they're hanging out with people who take it up the backside. That's the opposite of a masculine man. You must be suspicious of them. You must hold them to be accountable. And in fact, you'd be wise to stop consuming their content if they would associate with such persons for they're giving a platform and they're spreading evil. They're giving voice to evil. Not all money is good money. Not all money is worth it. Do you think that I could not make amends with these... Uh, these individuals who engage in sexual perversion? You think we don't have common contacts that, that want to make amends and, and help bring us together to, to squash the beef? No, I want the smoke and I want them defeated because they are representatives of evil. Do you think I wouldn't make more money or gain more popularity if I collaborated with these perverts who have millions of viewers? Yes, absolutely I would, but it's not worth it. And you need to question anyone who would collaborate with people who engage in perversion. While, while claiming to teach you morality, claiming to teach you how to be a better man. Just in case I've missed it, Orion sent a cash app. Okay. Peace to the Saints. Peace to the Saints. You got that one. Okay. And then Source Energy Labs, who came in earlier on cash app, sent a super chat. This is his first one on super chat. Word. $50. Baller alert. It said tuition, peace to the Saints. Peace to the Saints. Okay. All right. <laughs> and this is why when I walk in a room, heads go down. 
Talk about Behind it. my back, I'm nothing. I'm just a regular old comedian that's bitter and jealous. But in my face, no, no, no. Talk about the king it. has walked in and they have to respect it only because I've not taken the shortcuts. I've not been. Ooh, he said when the king shows up, all the baboons go silent. When the king leaves, they have so much to say. Talking behind your back, so much to say. You know, this reminds me of a situation, you know, Adolf 22, when he's on the show with his uh, his sodomite buddies, um, he, you know, he's has so much to say about Marquette Devon Burton. Then when I walk up to him on the streets, literally say, yo, you got something to say? You want that fade? No, no, no. It's just content. It's all good. High fives. We're all buddies. Oh, okay. So when the king shows up, then things are different. When the warrior king is present, things are different. Okay. Then when we get on the show, obliterated. Understand. If you know who you are, you have true confidence. You can never be defeated. They can never stand against you. Most people are just pretending to be confident. They're just pretending to know. There's so much fakery going on. If you're the real deal, man, you are immortal out here. Huh? Come on now. Shout out to Kat. He's speaking truth. I, I truly believe him because I've experienced this myself. You know, they will talk behind your back, but in front of your face, they're dead silent. <laughs> they will talk behind your back, but when you show up, it's all love. It's high fives. You're the man. Love the drip. Complimentary in front of your face. But the thing about a guy like Cat Williams, he's smart, smart enough to know these are liars. These are pretenders. These are dissemblers. Liars Shout Beat is back. This is a second. Baller alert. He writes, off subject, but this is just for our common dislike for Adam and Livingston. Uh, not a baller alert just yet. Not a baller. Excuse me, not a baller just yet, but in the making while paying tuition, peace to the saints, peace to the that saints. That was a baller alert. Yes, indeed. And you know, the key is, and he's on the right track, it's feeling abundance. People don't understand this, but when you actually get, get yourself some money, you're going to have to invest the money to make sure that it continues growing. Any dollar that you would leave in a savings account is dying. Your dollars must be like soldiers. Send them forward uh, so that they can expand your empire. So you have to be willing to risk capital. To risk capital, you have to feel abundance. And so if you don't feel that, you'll never be successful. And more importantly, you'll never be at peace and happy. And so you're on the right track. And I, I commend you for that. Breezy is back and said, Cat Williams is speaking facts. I dropped the link. He is speaking facts. I'm not I'm sure a, if he dropped a link to you. Uh, send it uh, via email if. Um, Debrisi, send it to the email at the bottom. Of yeah, the, the link. Yes. Funded. They pay you to not talk about things they don't want you to talk about. They tell you that themselves. I can't do that because I. Uh, Steve told you that he stopped doing stand up because he has seven TV shows. The only problem is when he stopped stand up, he didn't have those seven TV shows. He stopped stand up because he got in a comedy battle called the Championship of Stand Up Comedy with one Cat Williams in Detroit in front of 10,000 people and lost because Cat. This boy, Cat, man. This boy, Cat, is dropping too much. Like, listen, I'm listening to Cat right now, and this is probably how y'all feel listening to me sometimes, which is like, bro, don't go outside. They're going to take you out, man. Don't go outside. Get some bodyguards. They're going to take you out. He, he's saying a lot right now. He's saying a lot. And I've uh, I've heard Steve Comedy, uh, Steve Harvey stand up, and I find it underwhelming. And, you know, I really wouldn't speak on that in as much as, I don't find any reason to down a stranger except that I find it disappointing. A lot of the relationship advice he gives is extraordinarily detrimental. It is weird that we take relationship advice from people who are like thrice divorced and have not been able to show significant success in their relationships or even in fatherhood as a parent. And for that reason, he's out of his lane and he's spreading evil and corruption among the youth by pretending to know that which he does not know. And for that reason, I will speak up against him. William said he was actually bald and that was a wig. And I went in and that's why he couldn't do stand up anymore. Imagine him coming to tell you another story where he got. Listen, I'm not gonna lie to you. This is a true story. I can't remember who it was, but someone told me like damn near a decade ago that's probably more than that now. I was like in my early 
Yeah, I think I was like in my early 20s. Someone told me Steve Harvey was bald. This is back whenever he had the Steve Harvey show and he had that perfect afro that was like perfectly round. Someone told me like, yeah, he's bald. And I was like, you's a nut. Like, you're like, what's wrong with you, Shorty? Like, you's a real nut. And it turned out to be true. I'm, I want to point that out because number one, you know, I'm inclined to require evidence. If someone tells me something, especially if it doesn't seem to uh, register with meeting the eye, I need evidence. I'm not inclined to just believe things because people say them. But it was extraordinary because I heard it a long time ago and that person was in fact telling the truth. And I, even though it's a small thing, we need to understand that some things or, or rather um, no thing is too crazy that it can't be true. No thing is too crazy that it can't be true. So keep your mind open to possibility because uh, the ball was, in fact, wearing a goddamn wig for years on end. Good quality wig, too. All right. So big. And it was Bernie and them's fault because they wanted to be movie stars. What? You called Ocean Eleven to get that nigga's part. What do you mean you didn't want to be a movie star? So on the behalf of Bernie, I, I will have to say what I have to say. Have so you have ever been on truth. Have you ever been on tour with any of these guys? The guy, I, every guy I mention to you is not funny out there in real life. Damn. <laughs> this ball ruthless. He said everybody I mentioned is not funny. And you know what? Oh man, that's that's harsh. When you say a comedian is not funny, that's like saying a model is ugly. Like their core competency for their actual job is like they're not good at it. Like, God damn, that, that's vicious right there. Uh, give me a second. We have a we have a link. Oh, I saw this one. This one is disturbing, Jabri. Oh, man. Before you do that, we have EJ came in on PayPal. He said tuition, wrong, Tagalog, pimpin. Peace <laughs> of the Saints. Peace of the Saints. In a real way. Okay, so this I think this is the one that I've seen. And I remember when I saw this, I found this to be extraordinarily weird and disgusting. So um, bear with me here um, and, and wonder what the hell this was about. I'm going to refresh it so I can play from the beginning. <laughs> what up, boy? I, I, knew, I do get up. What are you doing, man? Get up. Get your head down, me Jack. Are you talking on the phone while operating a motor vehicle? What are you talking? I'm talking to you, Jack. Shut up. All right, all right. You know what they're going to do to you in jail? Why am I going to jail? Let me show you. This is going to happen to your little ass oh, in jail. Oh, my God. He's not here real time. <laughs> I remember when I saw that and my first thought was like, this is not funny at all. I don't, I don't feel the need to laugh at, at any level. Number one, I'm disgusted. Number two, if I had to be in either of those positions, uh, Kevin Hart's position, I, I couldn't do it. I don't know why he would submit himself to that. Uh, and then number two, if I had to be in Shaquille O'Neal's position of like putting my, my phallus and scrotum onto another man's buttocks, I'd be like, nah, I ain't doing that. Like, that don't feel right. Like that's not going to sit right with my soul. I'm going to be disturbed about this for months on end. And every time I see it replayed on the internet, but they did it for the money and neither of them needed the money, but they did it for the money and neither of them needed the money. That's sick, isn't it? And this is supposed to be funny, but it wasn't funny at all. And if it was funny to someone, what sickness controls them that that would be humorous? I want you all to know that there are certain ones among us that they take and they they use them and make them famous and well-known and they make us idolize them such that we would want to be like them and we would emulate their behaviors. What is Kevin Hart other than an emasculated, effeminate, goofy, chatty patty of a man? You see, he plays this goofy, small, fearful, little mouse-like role. Now, it's curious because Cat Williams is of the same stature, but doesn't play that, that character. You know, he's of the same stature, but he's not that emasculated, fearful, feminine acting individual. Something to think about. Okay. We have Roman's intuition. Shout out to Roman. Okay. All right. Let me get back to the main one. Yeah, that was wild. That was disgusting, sick, and sad, honestly. Nice. 
So mm -hmm. no. Faison's never done his own tour in 30 years. Steve Harvey don't do stand up no more. Cedric doesn't write. And I'm sorry, he doesn't write. Whoever his writer is Ricky terrible. Smiley has been playing the same old black woman forever. Like you can't get a young fan base with that. I did point that out earlier, especially when you say he's on radio. Well, that's why you have an ancient fan base. Like you gotta be doing karaoke around the country to make that work. Right. And he is. But I'm a stand-up comedian. This is my 19th 100 city tour. I'm not gonna have a con. Did Brody say my 19th 100 city tour? He did. He going in. He said I do this. He's saying I do this. I respect it. Conversation with these lazy bums that'll take a shortcut at any point. Yes, it's easier for you to juice than to get in the gym, but you don't get to bring that body in here talking crazy. Talk about how good, bruh. Listen, he said it's easier to get the male uh, BBL, the fake apps. It's easier to get the fake apps than the real apps. But if you went and got the fake apps, I cannot listen to you talk about male development. Sorry, it's easier to get the hair plugs and the men's uh, permanent eyebrow makeup and the, the chin uh, implants and the nose surgery. But if you get that, I cannot listen to you talk about spitting game and spreading ism. I cannot because you don't know the game and you don't have the game. You are not the ism because here's the thing. You become a woman when you do that. Who, who's doing all of the surgeries and the improvements? It's the woman. Who wears the makeup? It's the woman. Now you balls is wearing makeup. You expect me to respect you? Stop it. Never will I. Never will I. Yeah. You look. What? No, no. There's too many comics out there that are putting their life on the line to tell these jokes, man. Okay. Let's get to your upbringing. We're going to circle back and we'll get some... Huh? I want to protect them real quick. Because you had said for the kings of comedy... It was in 2018, 2019, but did you mean 1999? Because it came out in 2000, so I just want to make- No, I didn't, no, no, no. So what I meant to say was, remember, he said- First off, who is bro like coming out of nowhere? That motherfucker that came out of nowhere, like, hey, I just want to, like, bro, you ain't got a microphone, man. Shut up and sit your ass down. I don't know who this is, but I like how Cat is like peeping, like, wait, what, what are you saying? And you got to be mindful of like these, these nobodies coming out the woodwork because they will do this. I also want to uh, correct one thing. Someone in the chat said Charleston White is a real man. Nah, that's not the case either. Uh, check into Charleston White when he was dealing with the, the kid who looks like a, a, a white lesbian, Aiden Ross and, and all his buddies. Look at how Charleston White, a grown man, a grown black man, is being played with by this little kid. And how he's embarrassing himself to get more fame and notoriety. No, that's not the way. He is not a leader within this thing. He's a funny guy who says some things that are real sometimes. But nah, we got to keep it a buck. And I'm not going to continue to let the representation of black men be these miniature guys who look like they're genetically uh, genetically defective. You know, like frail body, lazy eye. Like, God damn, bro. Like, how are you the product of like the transatlantic enslavement where they were breeding slaves and you look like your ass is fresh out of a country that has malnourishment as a standard? Like, that don't even make any goddamn sense. I don't know what kind of dope the boy's on. But the fact is, I will not be represented by that. And I will not let it fly to claim that he's a leader when he's bowing down to like a teenage white kid trying to be cool just so he could get some uh, some more fame. Like, you will never find a leader and someone who will do anything to get noticed. That is what a TikTok thought does. Okay, on PayPal we have Wayne said, when you flex them bands earlier, it makes me want to hustle harder to get to that level. Peace to the Saints. Easy work. And remember, I just happen to have it on me. Like, I ain't go and say, like, oh, let me get a bunch of money for, like, if there's a nerd on the internet. Like, I happen to be in this country. I pulled up in the country the way I pull up. I need to have what I have to enjoy the kind of lifestyle that I'm accustomed to. It's just everyday stuff. You hear me? It's just, it's, it's what I call life. You hear me? More people stop talking about earbuds. Yeah, yeah. It's just life. It's life. Um, you want to go grab my other money bag just in case I need to go there again? Sure. Yeah, the, the, the blue one? Yeah. Just in case. Ed. I couldn't do stand up anymore. I had seven TV shows. I say he didn't have any of those TV shows at the time. I know you talking about Cedric. Joke stealer from Cedric. 
said that. Yeah, said oh, you. Okay, so, said that okay. 2018, 2019, but it came out in 2000, so I just want to make sure. Okay, no, 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 no. So we have a, a Skittle. It sounds like there's a Skittle guzzler in the background. His voice sound a little bit sus. So he probably don't like cat off rip. So here he is fact checking boy in the background. I think he's CNN. Well, according to uh, on the date of where were you January? He's like, bro, like shut up and sit down. Like you're not on camera. Like you, you don't, you don't have a microphone, but like, shut up and sit down. This is out of turn the channel. Like this is a Shay Shay show, right? This is a Shay Shay show. Uh, are you Shay and he Shay or are you Shay Shay? Tell him to shut the fuck up and carrying on. Uh, no. What comes out in 2000? The, the original Kings of comedy. Right. My, I'm on BET's Comic View, and they're using this as the commercial in 1998. Okay. That's why I'm saying, yeah. Man, so if I, yeah, so if I said the dates wrong, yeah. 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 So yes. you, let's go ahead and clear that up. Okay. You organized. said, yeah. I don't ever have my. I had sloppy. Cedric on here, and I asked animals. him about the joke stealing, and yeah. he said the timeline doesn't add up. Correct. To your to to that point, you That's say a damn shame. Right. So he thought that I was just yeah, a no name comedian are all off. and that it's he crazy. could take this joke and nobody would oh, know. Yeah. Right. The issue was that I had already done this particular joke on BET's Comic View twice. Yeah. Right. It had done so well on BET's Comic View that they had made it part of the commercial. So part of the commercial of make sure you tune in to BET was you seeing me doing this. Um, you know, just a little bit more boss talk. And I got to start carrying my money in my uh, briefcase because sometimes I check a bag with a bunch of cash in it. You hear me? And these dirty rascals go through my money bag and I can see that they did because the goddamn bands are, the you rubber bands are off. Very organized. Yeah, I'm, I'm very organized with a guap. You hear me? That's Basically just me. Same way. Yeah, I'm very organized with a guap. But, but listen to me. You know, my money like rainbows. You hear me? My money, my money LGBTQ out here, boy. It's different. And I listen, realize it's different than the one you showed before. Yeah, we just stack it all up for them. My money like rainbows, man. And listen to me, here's the difference. If I go to a country and take out 50,000, you hear me? If I take out 50,000 USD worth of guap and then I got change over, I don't even cash it back to the to US dollars. I just keep it cuz it ain't worth my time. You hear me? And me, I'm everywhere like air. I'm in every place like space. I might come back. You dig? I might come back. So I just keep it. Because my life is like that. Now, for dummies talking about AirPods, that's goofiness. With this, I could invent a new AirPod. You hear me? I hand over this kind of bread. I could have an AirPod invented. You hear me? They got the Ray Raycons, right? Maybe I'll call them the, the Marquette Cons. The, Marqu the Marquette Cons. Yeah. Man, it's different out here. But yeah, I got to remember to keep this in my briefcase. Yeah. These broke dirtbag like animals. Uh, sometimes I forget. That's it's annoying. That's so annoying. Yeah, they got my money all you can sloppy. All the rubber bands are empty, and normally it's yeah. all rubber bands. Yeah, right here. Well, yeah, see, they, they didn't rip my rubber bands up trying to get through my money. You know, I keep my money nice and organized, you dig? But these animals, that's why I hate the world governments because they're just here to control you. That's all they're trying to do. They're controlling you. What the hell? Do you really think that a terrorist is trying to go through the airport constantly? Hell no. Nah. That's why you got to have passports. They're trying to regulate the ability of individuals to move throughout the world so they can monitor and control you because they need data on you. So when you move to a different country, the government doesn't have data on you. So that's why they don't like you guys moving freely. You got to have these passports and all this bullshit. And they want to especially control wealthy people because wealthy people can be a problem. One thing you guys might not have known, I'm not going to mention his name. The guy, uh, his name rhymes with uh, Obama. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, it turns out he was a wealthy Saudi. Y'all didn't know that. And the reason he was dangerous is because not only did he have a message and he was very serious about his deen, his religion. Um, he also had the bag. And when you have the bag, you can buy weapons, you can fund military, you can fund armies, you can uh, create infrastructure in the places that you go so the people love you. So these are the people they try to control. Two, they, they, they're idiots still talking about, no, just buy AirPods. Again, you have Right, and, and I also have they AirPods. Have AirPods. <laughs> I also have AirPods. It's just silliness, but don't waste, let's not waste time with this. Uh, go ahead, click play. Yeah, and see, yeah, there are the AirPods. It's just silliness. But this is how we know we're dealing with broke people because broke people are concerned with irrelevant shit. You feel me? Don't worry about the AirPods. Worry about this right here. 
I have more money in foreign currency than you have ever had in your own currency. You hear me? I'm an American with more money in foreign currency than you even got in your local currency. Worry about that. Don't worry about AirPods. I'm going to read this just because he says, new listener, binging like hell, flabbergasted about how much I wasn't taught learning from this channel. Right. Feels like I just failed. Thanks a lot. It's okay. We're going to get it right. And, and uh, I'll, I'll put on a hand sanitizer after I uh, put this away. This joke. Right. And this joke is one of those jokes in comedy where you set it up and it takes a little longer to set it up. It takes about three minutes. But then you're just hitting them with jokes after that because you don't have to set it up. Right. Uh, Mark Curry had already helped me work on this joke because I thought it was good because I was getting a standing ovation on it. He had me go back in the lab and help me craft it to be an even more powerful joke. So this is not just a random joke. This is my very best joke and it's my last joke and it's my my closing joke. Okay. 1998. <laughs> he giving him that comedian game right now. Uh, shout out to the real ones, you dig? I'm doing this joke. It's on Comic View. Cedric comes to the comedy store. He watches me in the audience. He comes backstage. He tells me what a great job I did and how much he loves the joke. Two years later, he's doing that as his last joke <laughs> on the Kings of Comedy. And he's doing it verbatim. He's just changed my car into a spaceship. That's crazy. Okay, we have Kelton. Him and Steve had already apologized. Go ahead. Kelton on Cash Outside Peace for the Saints. Thank you for last night's session. Oh, indeed. You're welcome. And we have Zapata, Boston University. Shout out to Zapata. And by the way, uh, saints, like the, the governments of the world, like they're stealing from you every day. They're stealing from me too. This is what they do. They're mafia organizations. It does not make sense that you get taxed on your income. Then you go spend a dollar. You get taxed on the purchase. Word, you already taxed me. They're stealing from you. Is it to give you basic services? Hell nah. You can't even get health care. But they can always fund a new war. They can always pay for bombs in Ukraine. They can already uh, support uh, Israel. And here's another crazy thing you should wonder about. How in the hell when that earthquake occurred in uh, Japan, Biden's like, we're going to be there to help. With what money, Brody? With what money? Why? Uh, we're not Japanese. We're Americans. What are you talking about? When have the Japanese come in to help us? What are we doing here? Like, And this is nonsense. It's, this is the sick-minded controlling people in our society trying to exercise power and influence around the world they want to feel like god huh apologize for me so i gave them a pass for a decade why would you sit here and be like i talked to i saw cat 30 times <laughs> and cat didn't do as i stand before you shannon <laughs> I would have bust Cedric's stomach. <laughs> <laughs> there was nothing that would have kept me from one of these in, in that patch right there. Now, listen, people are going to front on Cat because he's small, right? But what you can't front on is that he with the shits. Like when, when Cat said I'd have fired on him, I believe it because I grew up around people like Cat. You heard me? People who say they'll fire on you, and then guess what? They're going to fire on you. So I, I absolutely believe he'd have fired on him. But I tell you what was funny, and this is why he's such a great comedian. Those within the African American speech culture, you know that he the the proper term would have been I would have bust his head open. But he said I'd have bust his stomach. <laughs> he dirty for that. But shout out to Cat because he is indeed what you would call a real one. On PayPal Wayne is back. He said, "Gotta leave some of the broke haters in the chat. Don't associate with the low life." Huh. Air. Like, are you kidding me? Why would you downplay me like that? Why did I give you a pass if you were just gonna lie? And so that's what I'm saying. Like, they're all a group. Cedric, Steve, Ricky, they've been a group. Everybody knows that. They've been aligned. And and there are the He said, look, man, these boys, they the backstreet boys, man. This is in sync. I'm going up against, man. I'm Michael. You heard me? I'm just Michael. Ain't no group. Forget the Jackson Five. I'm Michael. And these boys is in sync. And uh, and all that he right. And this is something we see consistently when it's ooh, ooh, pay attention when it's the force of good. It's that one guy. Right. It's Jesus. When it's the force of good, it's the prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon him. When it's the force of good, it's that one guy. 
when it's the force of evil, man, these hyenas gather up together, don't they? You know, against Jesus is all the Romans or it's all the I don't want to say the name of this group because I might get banned. You know what I'm talking about uh, when it's uh, going up against uh, goodness. It's the Quraysh. It's this whole culture. But when it's goodness, it's that one guy that stood up. Now, people might follow behind him, but it was that one man who stood up for goodness. Pay attention to that right there. Yeah, Hills End came in on the own. Shout to Hills End supporting the work. These alliances in comedy, and if you stand against them, then they sometimes have a problem. But we don't let that change the content because that's all you know me for, is that I'm quite likely to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help me God. Can you believe we're this deep into the NFL season? We got to make every second. Five tip. As I knew things and I wasn't sure how I knew them. Um, I knew things that I felt like I don't have a reason that I, I know this, but I, I love to read. Um, I was voracious because they told me when I was young that knowledge was powerful, uh, that knowledge was power and, and I had studied. One thing I can say about Kat is I actually do believe him. A lot of people claim that they, they read a lot and I don't believe them because they don't have the vocabulary or understanding to suggest that. Whereas with Kat, he has the vocabulary, the understanding, the critical ability that suggests that he has certainly absorbed the minds of some great thinkers. And so it's very believable. I need powerful people. And I, I, um, I really believe that I, I, I immediately, my next project was to read the whole encyclopedia set. So when you're like six, seven years old, you read, yes. hold on, because I'm, I'm five foot five Damn. in the fifth grade. I've been this high my whole <laughs> life. Like, there was a portion of school where I was one of the big dudes. Huh. Like it just, as soon as. It now that's actually really meaningful. So I, I want to dig into that a bit too, because I similarly have a giant complex. I mean, like I always feel like I'm the big man, even if I'm not, because I also grew early. So I was one of the taller kids always. And then maybe eventually some of the other guys, they might sprout up to 6'3", 6'4", 6'5", because, you know, black men tend to be tall. Um, but I always feel like the big guy because I grew early. And Cat is essentially saying the same thing. It makes sense when you look at his personality as a big personality, as a dominant personality. So that's actually a meaningful insight. Everybody caught the growth spurt. I was out of it. <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm saying I was a competitive individual. Mm -hmm. My father was an athlete. I can see that. Like, 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 no, I've been 145 pounds my whole career. That's why I never <laughs> bothered when they said, you cats on drugs. I knew, how you going to prove that? I'm, <laughs> my body is a temple. I've been, I've been the same size <laughs> since I was 10. Like, what do you, yeah, like, I, I, ha I haven't, ch I haven't changed off this pivot foot. This has always been who I was before stand up or anything. But it, now, that's also another thing you're, you're going to notice consistently is that, and you've heard me say this many times, I've been the whole person or the same person my whole life, been the same person my whole life consistently. You see, there's some people, they reinvent themselves. That's why you can't really um, trust them because you're like, bro, you're, you're a cornball. You got money. Now you got women. Now you're teaching men how to get women, but you've only been getting women for like two years. Stop it. You heard me? Stop it. You're new to this. You ain't true to this. And so one thing that I want you guys to understand is that always go to the genuine article, go to the people who don't talk it. They live it because they really did it. That's the key. He's a chill saying on five, five, two, bro. I hear you, babe. I hear you. And short, shout out to the short King. You did. Shout out. Melvin came in on Cash App and said, support the black revolutionary. You In a real way. That's what we talking about. The, um, it was an interesting childhood. I, I, I appreciate my parents, even though um, I couldn't live within the religious frameworks of right. what they had set up. Um, but that was more not wanting to live a double life and not want to embarrass my family. You know what I mean? Because I read where a form of punishment for you is that they would take books because you mentioned you were such a voracious reader and a form of punishment the intentions in it right so i trusted god that it will work out why florida um because i if you're raised in ohio the one thing on your list is i'm gonna get away from snow <laughs> and i'm he's a great man i'm, I'm saying uh because it seems my, like y'all butt head, heads right but i'm saying 
That's so that, what it was. That's when you made the decision. After yes. that conversation right there, you say, no, nah, I can't I can't live under this roof. It wasn't a conversation. It was an altercation. In the <laughs> altercation, I love <laughs> Shout out to Kat, man. And I like that about Kat is that he will correct things and he'll he'll set things right on what the truth is. Um, so, so I very much so like that and respect that about uh, Cat Williams. And he's accurate. He doesn't, you never get the feeling that he's hiding something or trying to be duplicitous. And this is a feeling I get very often when I watch people on YouTube. I'm like, I don't think he really liked that. And that's one of the things that I pride myself on. That's why when I come to people's country, you know, I'll meet up with guys, work out with them because I'm just being myself, who you've observed me to be. That's who I actually am. You know, if you see me out in the public, you approach me with respect, you holler peace to the saints. I'm going to holler it right back at you. And I'm going to be as excited to meet you as you are to meet me because I know I'm meeting someone who's honorable and of good character. And that's what, that's a true measure. Uh, is there a reason you keep changing the view on the. I'm not touching anything. My hands are not touching the computer. So you just have to say no, if that's the case. Um, all right. Because it's taking off the, the share screen. So. Love my father. My father loved me. But we are two men at it. That It'll never be the same again. You can't sleep comfortably around me. And I can't sleep comfortably around you. How similar are you to your father? I'm in Miami, Florida. I have no family members in Florida. I couldn't buy a house if I wanted to. I couldn't get an apartment if I wanted Great. to. I don't have a credit history. Like, this is not a stretch for me to say that I'm homeless. I'm living in a park in Coconut Grove. The park still exists to this day. For <laughs> they said the park still exists. Hey, shout out to Cat to for keeping it real and um, talking about the actual struggle that he emerged from. I can't hate that. And you have a lot of characters, especially online, they want to fabricate their life and act like they came from the mud or they came from great struggle when really it's just not factual. Uh, one of the popular figures who tries to pretend as though he had a rags to riches story is Gary Vaynerchuk. And it makes it makes me sick to my stomach. It's like, Gary V, like, bro, your father was an entrepreneur, a successful entrepreneur. You inherited a business. I don't want to hear all this tough talk as though you're some, some genius who was like buckled down and through discipline, you rose up. Like, no, you had one of the easiest come ups in world history. Like, you're a pathetic liar. And this is what you find on the internet. People who try to act like they were rags to riches coming from the actual mud when it's just not true. Eight hours a day, I would get up and go to the library and study for eight hours a day to increase my education. And then I would leave out of there and go to the marina and steal car radios and make $2,000 almost daily. That was hood. <laughs> that was hood. Did this bro, did, did my boy say um, I was still in car radios? What is this, 1992? It's like when that movie Colors came out. My boy is still in car radios. Like I had a routine. This so you really could have played that San old thief in Santa Claus. You could have played it. No, the Santa Claus wasn't a thief. The Santa, yeah, he was. He the told. Santa Claus, you can't tell me. I read the script. Ricky Smiley told you he didn't read the script. The, the Santa Claus. A hey, hey, shout out to, to Kat. And here's the funny thing. It, it's a, a role reversal, right? Shannon Sharp has the big muscles and he's supposed to be the big, strong, tough nigga. And then Cat Williams is a small, puny guy, but he got the big brain, right? So you got the, the big buff guys like laughing. <laughs> You're supposed to be the stealing Santa Claus. And then Cat Williams dead ass here is like, no, you can't tell me. I read the script. That's incorrect. And so Cat Williams is commanding the power. He's exercising strength. And the other guy just looks strong, but he's not strong. Daryl's back on Cash Up. I think this is number three. He said, checking out, enjoy the rest, Saints. Peace to the Saints. Peace to the Saints, and thank you for having been with us. Oz was a crackhead. He just had that outfit on. That's what I couldn't have played. Okay. Like, I couldn't have played a black guy that got raped in the bathroom. Right. Ooh. So at any point in time, you like, man, I made a mistake, man. I should have stayed my butt in Ohio, man, because this is, man, this ain't what I signed up for. I didn't experience anything once I left home that I hadn't signed up for. Mm. If anything, See, that's accountability. I like that right there. Kat said, when I chose to walk on this path, I knew 
what was littered on this path. I knew the there would be you know impediments to my success. There would be the jealous hearted. There would be the wicked, the deceitful. Uh, I knew all of these things would be here, and I chose to walk down this path. I respect it. That is true accountability right there. Thing has saved my life. Me being being homeless for that small period of time allowed me to see all of the people that were in that situation and to see that these were lawyers and doctors and and, and, and teachers and that these people were white and black and Asian and Indian. And the only thing that all of these homeless people had in in, in common was um, they made a bad decision and aligned themselves with drugs. And I interviewed them. I like that. And shout out to Kat. You know, he he knows that intoxicants destroy. Now, clearly he's sitting there drinking alcohol. Uh, so he's not come all the way over to the ism, but he knows. And that's a beautiful thing. And I've seen the same thing that he just described. And that's why I'm so vehemently against drugs and alcohol. If you read my book, The Black Box, you can you can read about real stories where you can see it destroy people. So uh, shout out to um, Kat. And if you're watching this and you're struggling with drugs or alcohol, I encourage you not to quit tomorrow, but to quit today. Make a decision and get help. I'm not sure what changed, but they're saying there's an echo now when you're playing the video. Oh, no kidding. No kidding. Okay. We have Kaplan says, shout out to you and the cause. Just finished my... There are some. Um, yeah, so absolutely. So if you join the member sites and get in the discord, you can have access to chat with them. Absolutely. And I know for a fact that there's a saint in South Carolina that just recently joined. Yeah. And then we have justice who's been to. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And the the brother is sharp too. Ball. What drug? What? And guess what, Shannon? Nobody had a great story. Nobody had a great story of what meth had done for them, what crack had done for them, what cocaine had done for them, what heroin had Months, four months. Well, it it doesn't allow the regular comic the ability to grow is the real problem. Like the part of comedy is me taking these jokes in January and by March, I've begun to craft this joke. Okay. It's not as simple as it was when I wrote it. It was just da 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 da. But now it has the complexities of the fact that I'm having to deliver this to an East Coast audience, a down South audience, a Midwest audience, a Utah audience, a Colorado audience. And so it begins to take on a different complexion because you're having to deliver it to different people. Okay. And so this is what sharpens your joke. You then take those sharpened jokes that make us special, not you just randomly take like all the funny guys are already funny and known names. Like, how am I going to progress? So I realized that I, I, I do better with a white audience than I do with a black audience. And I, I'm not sure why that's a. That's curious. Uh, when you saw Kat, what ethnicity, what would you say was the racial makeup of the audience? I was a minority. Are you, there was mostly black folks? Yeah. Huh, curious current okay. but the white audience likes me more that's that's interesting so when i moved to sacramento it's because sacramento has a white and a black audience almost 50 50 that's okay. almost the makeup of sacramento so- hey by the way saints i'm winding down right now i'll give you some time to send in your comments questions as we uh wind down saint audio is low boy that's they're saying it's better now that's old Okay. All right. I'll use some time to send your comments, questions uh, right now. <laughs> he says, cat is capping. I think you're right. I think his audience is overwhelmingly black and urban. Uh, however, he might be speaking of the fact that the white uh, component of his audience perhaps has more discretionary income to support, perhaps. I don't know. But yeah, I don't think that's true. It doesn't have the ring of fact. I guess now it's good when the video plays, but when you're talking, it's slow. Okay. So it's crispy when the video plays. I <laughs> got it. Got it. All right. Go ahead, read that one. Rakeley said, an interesting thing in this interview, in the beginning, Shannon is worried about his connections, then later turns real. Shout out to Kat, flips Shannon by comparing him to himself with the playing superior team's comment. Hmm, right. And let me see, there we go. That should increase the volume quality. 
You see, Cat is a very intelligent individual, and what he's able to do is um, utilize uh, similes or excuse me, uh, analogies. Sorry about that. Utilize analogies to uh, liken himself or liken his situation, such that the person he's speaking to finds it more relatable, and thereby he softens them up. He's a great communicator, and also he has a, a fingertip feel for other people. And it's important as a comedian, when you're a comedian similar to being a public speaker, which stand-up comedy is more difficult than public speaking, you have to be in tune with that audience. And he just spoke to that when he noted, hey, I have to alter my jokes when I'm talking to a Midwest audience, a down South audience, an East Coast audience, which is true. There's some jokes that would do really well in the South, but people would be offended in New York because they're woke there. And you have to be able to operate in those markets. And so he's doing live media, live art and content where you can see people's facial reactions. And hell, they can call out from the audience. And so uh, he certainly has a skill of reading people and being able to sway them. Because what is a comedian if not someone who's able to reach into the mind, the psyche, and the emotions and, and manipulate it and make you laugh? It's a beautiful thing. Shop, we have Juan sent $50. Baller alert. He says, Peace to the Saints. Peace to the Saints. And we have Alejandro says, How many women would you recommend deal with at once? Uh, it depends on if you're speaking of just like a stable. It depends on if you're speaking of, you know, long term relationships. You're settling down into marriage and family life, not legal marriage. Or you're, it also depends on your age as well. So, you, know, you might have a, a greater appetite earlier. Uh, you know, in your youth, say age 16 to 25, you might have a monstrous appetite and you can just devour these chicks by the dozens, you hear me? Uh, but you might be in your late 20s and your appetite has begun to subside, your standards have raised, and those are the things that you need to make a consideration of, you know, presuming that you're a young man in your 20s, if we're talking about a rotation, just of women that you're dealing with, who may or may not be of any significant worth other than intercourse. If that's the case, I think a solid rotation, you want to have five. And remember, you know, they come in the front door looking for the back door. So five is a good rotation, but that doesn't mean that it's stable. You know, it's good to have a stable stable. So a five girl rotation, you might have three that are solid and two that are shaky and one that's, you know, in and out. And so if it's averaging five, you'll be in good shape. You can always, you know, get, have it your way. There's Jacob sent a PayPal. He said, hello, Bridget. I have attached two links for Instagram shorts. I would like Mark Quet's interact reaction to them if he yeah. has the time. Um, so I'm going to send you the first one. It is the video we saw yesterday in Las Vegas. I was actually going to do that one during uh, trending news, but, but I'll go ahead and pop it up. I just sent you the Instagram link that he okay. sent, and I'm going to pull up the other one. Okay, and can you send the link separately on uh, text? And I we'll, sent it to you. Okay. And it's still delivering. Can we carry on? Sure. So uh, send both of them. Oh, you're caught up. Okay, the fantastic. One to be with Adam Twenty Two. Okay. Um, so you should get them to. So I live in Sacramento for two years until I get to the point where I am equally as funny if the room is black as I am if the room is white. Okay. That's not enough. Now I need to be one of the good ones when it comes to black comics. So now I have to move to Oakland and that's what lands me in Oakland for three years. Once I have dominated. In San Francisco, you joined the nation. I was ever in San Francisco. I was in Oakland. You was in Oakland. Did you join the nation? Is that? Yeah, Minister, Honorable Minister Farrakhan and I have um, an extremely close relationship. He, he refers to me um, as one of his sons. So, um, yeah, I, I spent a particular period of time. Let me. Now, this makes sense that uh, when he says the nation, they're referring to the Nation of Islam, which is that organization currently run by the most honorable Louis Minister, uh, Minister Louis Farrakhan. Uh, who is one who was taught by the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, uh, who says that he was taught by yet another person. Um, this is an organization known uh, as the Black Muslims, who are not Sunni Muslims, but they do follow a form of Islam, if you could call it that. 
um, that has aspects of Christianity and aspects of you know race consciousness in it. And um, you know, it's been quite a remarkable organization which I've studied and observed and you know partaken in uh, at various points. Um, and I know quite a bit about it. Uh, Farrakhan is, you know, a, a extraordinary gentleman, very intelligent, one of the best speakers on earth today. Um, and certainly he too has been blackballed for a variety of reasons. You know, things he said, knowledge he has. I'm surprised he's still alive, frankly. And it's not surprising that Kat would get together with the uh, Honorable uh, Minister Louis Farrakhan in as much as they uh, share some of the same values, have uh, similar levels of conservative type values with regards to you know being heterosexual, respecting family, um, understanding masculinity, um, and also being one who sees the corruption in the American political system and the hypocrisy in the American society and culture. So that makes sense. And then Kat also, you know, there are certain places of refuge that people who are highly intelligent need, and that's what we have here. The assassin is damn near a, a refuge for the. Uh, the gifted, the intelligent, the creative, the productive persons in our society, the sane persons in our society. So it's not surprising that Kat would gravitate toward someone who is uh, comparable to him in the person of uh, Minister Louis Farrakhan and also an organization that has values that are similar to his own. Do I think uh, Kat believes in all of the ideas and ideology and religious beliefs of the Nation of Islam? I highly doubt that. And increasingly those beliefs are quite perverse in as much as uh, Louis Farrakhan has certainly perverted the original message of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. This is a fact. And he's, in fact, invented things and added to the teachings, which is to say corrupted them. And the organization itself is in decay. And if you guys are interested, you can ask me about it. I'm happy to talk about it. But this is not surprising at all. Uh, shout out to... Okay, thank you very much. Shout out to Jundal. Um, he writes, peace to the saints supporting the work. Indeed, respect. Shout out to the, the saints in the Philippines, all good people. Uh, been with us for a long time supporting. Yeah. So, you know, one day, uh, may we all have a chance to link up. Carrying on. Explain. Yes. Because my particular background was already religious mm -hmm. and super strict, right? I didn't find out about other religions by reading about them. I went to their religion. I, I, I don't want to learn from Jewish people from outside. I want to be in the synagogue. I want to, I, I don't want to learn about Muslim people from, I, I want to be in the mosque. I, I, I don't want to hear about the Baptist or the Pentecostal. I want to go to their church okay. and see. And so that was the religious discovery that I was on through that period in my life. Now I can identify with Kat in this uh, and what he's saying. If you've read my book, The Black Box, it, similar to Cat as well, I was raised uh, by Christians and in part raised by my grandmother who, older people, they're closer to death, which is to say closer to God, and they have spare time than most people leading lives that are unprofitable and unproductive in their old age. All they really have is the church and the casino, right? This is where they go because, uh, you know, they're, we, we've broken down families so badly in the West that your grandmother doesn't live with you like she should in her old age. She lives at a nursing home or a convalescent home or a senior citizen's apartment. And so they're disconnected, bored. Half of their friends have perished. And so they spend their time in the church, which is filled with other senior citizens. And then they spend their time playing bingo or slot machines uh, filled with uh, other senior citizens. They're disconnected from the family as, you know, valueless human beings. Anyways, um, so what they're primarily doing is gambling and, and reading about God because they're about to see him soon. And for that reason, uh, my grandmother had time to spend with me and she very much so imbued me with the word of God, the Lord. And so I had a fairly religious upbringing like Cat. And also being intelligent, uh, one has to question and take a look at the Christians and wonder, well, if the God is God is good and the Bible is impeccable, why are the Christians behaving so badly? And then you observe the behaviors uh, within the black community and the black American, they have the highest levels of religiosity of any ethnic group in America. You wonder, well, why are there so much uh, criminality and why is the culture so, so low? 
Um, so these things cause you to think and go on a journey. When I was teaching in Baltimore, Maryland, I saw such horrible things primarily happening to children that uh, I just felt I was lost in a world where no one cares. And I was like, where are the good people? And I went on that journey searching for the good people, which led me to go to many religious institutions similar to what Kat is describing. And that's why when you hear me speak about the different religions, whether it's the Ethiopian Orthodox, the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, um, the Armenian Christians, uh, you know, the Muslims, you name it, I can speak with a decent level of uh, knowledge because I, I've been there. You know, I've, I've actually explored these religions, even the Mormons. And so I can speak from experience and from knowledge and from reading their books. And that's why the ism is such a beautiful thing. We embrace all of the peoples of the book, all the religious people, and also all the non-religious people. And our only recommendation to you is that if you are a religious person, we want you to follow your book better than you do today. We want you to be better at executing it because all of the books have good things within them. Anyways, um, Mario just asked for the Master Communicator course that is linked in the chat. Okay. We have Nico. He came in back to back to have this read. Okay. He said, Saint, please provide your input, seated posture, and etiquette. Many well respected sit with their legs crossed, which can be considered feminine, while mm -hmm. others sit in different fashions. Peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. Yes, it's a matter of your comfort and also what you're trying to convey. Personally, I find that the most powerful, dominant, seated posture is with your legs wide open. You're taking up more space, you have no uh, concealment of the scrotum and the phallus. So this is dominant masculine posture at its best. And yes, some people would consider the legs crossed to appear feminine, I understand it. I also know a lot of peas that you know take that posture. A lot of cats in the 70s and 80s take that posture. You know, you, that's that, that super fly kind of life. So it, it's different, it's a matter of opinion, but we have to realize that things are culturally interpreted so for example whereas in asia i'm not speaking of the uh, country i'm in right now but like saying like china and you know in korea like you might take some chopsticks and lean down and just like shovel the food into your mouth in asia that's fine that's not bad etiquette in the west that's terrible etiquette like you, you don't do that it's completely out of sorts so culture matters and how you execute on certain things in the west if you wear head covering inside as a man that's impolite you should take your hat off uh, in the Muslim world, if you have a head covering on indoors, that's fine. We don't think anything of it. So you have to understand the cultural context uh, in which you exist and you know what you would have dominate. Okay, we have Endless Apex said, Blazer is fire. I appreciate that. Designed it myself. Thank Ivy you. Ivy said, Peace to the Saints. I sent an email, Marquette. So her email says, okay. Peace to the Saints. Great live, Marquette. Thank By you. the way, my sister and I seriously did not laugh at that video. Right. <laughs> also concerning Jabrizi, the Lady Saints need you to send an active email to receive our cookbook. Please send info on Lady Saints Instagram. We appreciate you. Thank you, Marquette, for doing what you do. Absolutely. Thank you very much. And yes, um, they are ready to send you the cookbook that you paid for, the ebook, and they need an active email address. So uh, you can uh, kick that over to them. And thank you, Jabrizi, for supporting. And thank you to all the Saints who support me and support one another, support each other. Uh, that is what community is about. I'm now going to pull up two of the links. I will state that the gentleman who sent in the two links, yeah. one of them uh, has a warning from Instagram that it's explicit uh, content or um, you know extreme content. I'm not going to play that on YouTube because I already have a, lot, a number of warnings on this channel. Uh, the other content I hope is not explicit or extreme because that would not be helpful for our cause. Okay, um, on Cash App, we have Jose came back to back. He said, did you hear about the black man who shocked LV Judge? Fresh news happened today or yesterday? Yeah, it happened yesterday. I saw that. It was a beautiful thing. Uh, honestly, I was quite happy to see it and entertained. And I guess the only shortcoming is he didn't gouge your eyes out. But aside from that, it was pretty cool to see. I, I did enjoy it. Is that the explicit one? No, but that one can't be shown on YouTube either because it shows outright violence. Wow. And though they're willing to show children nudity on Instagram, yes, nudity and perversion, you can't see violence because they don't want you to be manly and masculine and violent because violence is what overthrows governments. Sex and nudity don't overthrow governments. Who are you back? I hope you will be watching for Prison Bay well, and not for FYBJ Main. I also just want to see what you're packing. You know? You're always telling me you want to get into the game. I want to see what's under the hood. This is so G A Y. What the fuck? Bro, yeah. I, I need security with me, bro. When I pop out like people can't say shit like that to me, uh, Remo. I'm I'm famous now, bro. 
I'm Adam can't be talking to me like that. D, the world watching me and shit. He disrespected me, talking about some, yeah, mm, see what's under your hood and shit. Do I look like one of those? Is it is it the cardigan? Through uh, your packing. I hope you would be that that's that's a good question. That that's a good question. It's why are you why are you trying to sex play me, my boy? Why are you sex playing people out there? But here's the thing. You know, if you feel that kind of way, man, um, tell them to cut the cameras off and just go outside and see about that. Show them what you're packing. Pause, if you know what I mean. Um, yeah, I mean, he's a weirdo. I'm, I was the first person to call, call this. BBMLD, uh, Sneak Ho, um, clearly Molestiny, uh, Cuck22. These are homosexuals. They all hang out together. They all... You know, buddy, buddy, support each other. They all engage in, um, you know, letting their woman sleep with other guys, and they want to sleep with the woman with the other guy at the same time. These are homosexuals. We have Amar came in on PayPal. Said, "Quet, did you see the imam who was fatally shot in Newark, right outside the masjid around the same time as is it far prayer? What has it spelled? F H A R. F A J R. Oh, Fajr. Fajr prayer. Uh huh. Did you see? No, no, I didn't see that. No." Uh, this one is funny as all get out. I can't show it to you guys because I will, in fact, uh, get flagged because YouTube is very sensitive about violence. Again, because they don't want men to have testosterone aggression or to be willing to commit violence because, as it was said by some of our forefathers, give me liberty or give me death, which is to say that they would fight for liberty. They want you weak and docile. So as a result, they, they, you can't see violence. They don't want you to accept that violence is a natural part of human existence. This was hilarious, you hear me? I was very happy to see it. Um, and the only tragedy is that he didn't go harder. Um, but it was a beautiful thing. And shout out to Brody. I mean, like the way he hopped over that goddamn, uh, that was amazing. Was the ball's quick. a real athlete. He was swift. And you know, one of the important things that you would have noticed is that there's the white guy in the suit. You could tell he's never experienced violence. He was trying to get the guy off. He was like, hey, 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 hey. And it's like they're completely ineffective punches. It's almost like, bro, like, look out, man. Stop, stop tickling me. It was like, wow, like this is the kind of male that the society has produced. He's throwing 10 extraordinarily weak, soft punches. He can't protect himself. He can't protect a woman. He can't protect a family. He's a despicable character. That is what they want in the society. The government wants to be the only big bad wolf on the block. You ever wonder why the RICO laws exist? You ever wonder why they're against organized crime? Organize. Organize. They hate the organization. Why? Because government itself is organized crime. They don't want a criminal enterprise, also known as a street gang. They don't want a street gang bigger than their street gang. Huh? Jose came in on Cash Up and said all the rainbow behavior happened after he kicked staff. I'm not sure if they're talking okay. about the video. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I, I called that like years ago. Here's another thing you need to consider, saints. Why is it, this is so illogical, why is it that premeditated crime is punished more than crime that is not premeditated? You might, Marquette, well, you think it makes sense, but it doesn't make any sense. Premeditated crime means that someone has wronged me, I decided to target that individual one person who has wronged me, and I created a plan to execute against that individual. Well, that's a person who's rational and sane. I'm willing to let them back into the society because they're predictable. But somehow that's punished worse than the person who reacts psychotically, has an emotional breakdown, and goes loony and just attacks one person or indiscriminately. They get to plead insanity and then we let them go free. Also, the insane person we let go back into the society? What kind of sense does that make? I prefer the guy who is wronged by one person. He creates a methodical plan and executes against that one person. That makes sense. They're a safer person in the society versus the person who's so emotional, flips out, has a mental breakdown, or just is temporarily insane. That person we don't need in the society. So why do they get punished less? Why do they get to go out in the society? I'll tell you why. The government does not want methodical, rational persons in the society. Also, the government says, okay, the person who decided to seek vengeance on their own, they didn't call us. They didn't call the police. They didn't call the government. The government wants to solve all your problems, which they can never do. They can't even run a goddamn DMV. They can't run a DMV. They can't run a public school. How do you go to a public school, which is a government school, and you still don't know how to do your own taxes? 
That doesn't make sense. Government gives you taxes, but never shows you how to do your taxes. Maybe it's on purpose. Maybe they want you to screw it up so that then they can incarcerate. I mean, it's, come on now. Come on now. Carrying on. But yeah, that was funny as hell, man. Like this was a beautiful thing. I love to see it. I think uh, any human being who wants to become a judge, a judge of others, uh, these are sick persons who want to control others. And more importantly, what really I've said for many years is that you should never be a judge unless you've done time in prison. Not to say you should go get inmates and turn them into judges, but a part of the requirement of being a judge is you should spend a couple months in jail or in prison. I bet a lot fewer people are going to want to do it. Once you spend a couple months or uh, months in prison or jail, then you understand what it means to tell someone they're going to jail for five years or 50 years. Then you understand because right now they don't understand at all. There's no way in hell you sentence somebody to 10 years thinking they're going to come out and readjust. You cannot readjust after you've been in jail for 10 years. It's impossible. It is an extraordinarily traumatic experience. We have imbeciles who sentence you to hell on earth not knowing what hell consists of. Carrying on. When did you know you were funny? Oh, sorry about that. Let me switch this. Mm, probably um, about 10 years ago. Like, 10 years ago? Yeah, about 10 years. So you didn't think, so you didn't think as a child, because obviously you said the very structured background, your family is, was very religious. So obviously you didn't get an opportunity. Um, and I, I yeah, mean, like what? I never did a talent show. I was okay. never in any, any extra career. That's why she got canceled. Iterating God's word at that point. Uh -huh. Now I just have to make sure that the content is good. If the content is good, what part can I not do? I'm I, 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 but no, you, your question was, when did I think I was funny? I never was my biggest fan. I, to this day, I'm not the biggest fan. I'm a fan of comedy. I like great comedians. Like, I like Chappelle. I like Patrice O'Neill. Like, I like the greats of comedy because I do. Like, I, I like Ron White. I like Bill Ingball. Like, I know comics. Like, people that did the craft, they raised me. I was touring with Steve Marmel and Rich. Richard Jenny, a real journeyman. Mm -hmm. So my comedy upbringing was standard. I thought you had to work all night, every night, all around the country, and you had to write jokes. I really like what he's speaking of because this is this is apprenticeship. This is how men throughout the ages came up in their professions, mentorship, and. You see, there's a different level of skill, wisdom, and confidence that you get from those men who have learned it from a long line of great men before them. And I think that's what, what's missing a lot in this, uh, this manosphere space, which I don't consider myself to be a part of. Um, one thing, I, you'll hear me a lot if you follow me for any amount of time when people ask me, like, you know, where'd you get this game from? My old head, you hear me? My uncle was a real P, you dig? Uh, my OG Kevin Cox, man, put me on a lot of game, and I came up under real bosses, you dig? So when you hear some of my language, you're hearing their language. You know, there's a long stream of ism and game that, that has been running through these men over time that is in me, that they put into me. And that's one thing I recommend to you guys. Sometimes people talk about confidence or how can you become articulate? How can you become better at filling the blank? Be around people who are good at filling the blank and they will put you to the test. They will force you into greatness, I promise you. Thank you, Omar, for the support. Yeah, shout out to Omar, indeed and that you were trying to write jokes that other people weren't writing and that your job was to be funnier. Like, I, people that know me will tell you I've been on this. Like, I, I had a list of all the black comedians that were more famous than me. There was 300 of them on the list. And <laughs> he said there was 300 of them on the list. That's a lot. One thing I want to highlight about Kat's success that you can take into your success journey is that He's very emphatic about the fact that he's very focused on his craft. He's serious about being a comedian. He's serious about studying the greats. He's putting himself in position among the greats. You hear those three P's I remind you of. People, places, positions. People. He's, he wants to be a stand-up comedian. You heard him name all the comedians he came up with. He was around. People, places. He talks about, well, I'm from Cincinnati, but... 
you know, I had to go here and I had to go here. Get on the scene like a sex machine. Places are important. And then positions. Yes, you actually have to show up to the the stand-up venue and put yourself in position. You got to go on tour. You got to put yourself in position. No one else will do it for you. People, places, positions. That's the simple understanding of how do you accelerate? How do you move forward? It does not happen by choice. It happens by obsession and being serious about yourself. You got to make a promise to the self. And that's something he's doing. I just want to highlight that in case you're missing it. You're missing the fact that you know, he's really about that. He's not talking about, oh, my side hustle was this. Oh, I was also doing this. No, comedy, comedy. And that's one thing I remind you guys of. People are so often talking to me about, oh, well, I got this side hustle. God damn, bro, you got like nine jobs. How are you going to be good at anything? How are you going to be known for anything? You got too many jobs, man. Stop it. And I had to be able to cross them all out before I could make it to the next level before I felt like I was funny enough to do that. And so I, 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 I appreciate what competition does for sports and for my particular about your kids. We won't talk about jail, no cases. We ain't going to talk about none of that. Right. And immediately gets in there and goes the opposite way. You can't flip up on me about you. Yo, you went on a radio interview. If I'm not mistaken, that's in Atlanta. Right. Every spear, they all look like. Man, what you got to get Wanda Sykes? You think I don't remember that? Sir, Wanda Sykes and Wanda Smith are two separate people. I mean, Wanda Smith. And I had only said one name, sir. Wanda Sykes is amazing. I love Wanda. And I agree. I love Wanda. That's my girl. But I remember on the radio, you went on a radio interview. If I'm not mistaken, that's in Atlanta. Right. And. You came on there with seemingly good intentions, and she attacked you. It wasn't just that part. It was the fact that before I go in there, she has a conversation about, okay, now, I just want to talk to you because you just want an Emmy for the city of Atlanta, and this is in Atlanta, and they just want to hear about the Emmy and hear from you and to thank you for what you did putting the city on. And we won't talk about your kids. We won't talk about jail, no cases. We ain't going to talk. I like that he's putting this out here because this is the nature of show business. And for those of you who haven't been behind the scenes, well, you have a lot of people who are not very professional. They, they lack corporate experience. They lack integrity. And there's a lot of pretend, right? I mean, after all, show business is for the show. Um, it's not for what's real. Actresses, actors, they're professional pretenders. And in as much as that's the case, um, these are not real people. So before a show, and I even ask the same thing, except I stick to it. I say, is there anything you don't want to talk about? Is there anything you don't want brought up? And I stick to that because I respect people. And he's speaking of a situation he's hosted on a show and they give them a a, a set of conditions that they're supposed to abide by and then they lie. This is what happened on the Whatever podcast. The gentleman invited me out to do a dating podcast. It would be me and five to seven girls, me, him, five to seven girls. And all of a sudden we show up. That's not the case. It was a setup. And often people in show business will do this to increase their ratings. And they do this intentionally and then they lie about it on the back end. So I totally believe him and I respect the way that he reacted. And similarly, being intelligent and quick witted, anytime you're competing with someone on the plane of intellect and that's it's Cat Williams, it's Marquette Devon Burton, you're not going to win. You hear me? Like, this is what we do. Uh, So they tried to set him up and it ain't working. I like the way he went off and I'm interested to hear about this. Okay, on PayPal we have Imanique said, first time supporter. Wow, okay. Have you heard of Zachary Hubbard? He's an author with two books and has 10 years of research on exposing the abominations of our society. He brings a different point of view that I have not seen anywhere else. Worth looking into a piece to the same. I've not heard of him. Either. Thank you for sharing that. We, we welcome you. Carry on. Talk about none of that. Right. And immediately gets in there and goes the opposite way. You can't flip up on me because you're an inferior comedian. I'm going to destroy you and I'm never going to call you out of your name. I'm never going to say anything disrespectful to people that look like you. I'm, I'm, it's a very thin line. I got a call. But this lady is trying to embarrass me in front of a largely homosexual fan base. That- <laughs> <laughs> Bruh, you ain't lying, man. And them homosexuals, the homosexuals. 
Bro, they are, they stick together and they're vicious, man. They vicious. You hear me? Yes, indeed, they vicious. And he in Atlanta, he's in a den of vipers. You hear me? Um, and I agree. It was certainly a setup. And these people are filled with such hatred. And it's ironic because they say they want to be accepted and they, they try to speak against hatred. They say love is love, but they, don't, they can't love you and they can't be open to the diversity of your opinion. You got to be open to the diversity of their sexual behaviors, but they can't be open to the diversity of your values, right? And so there's no doubt that persons like him, um, myself, will be attacked for having values and you know, respect to him for how he handled it. Me, you hear me, once, uh, once they want to take it left, I'm all the way left. You know, this man, is, he's more decent than I am in as much. He's like, I'm not going to call you out of your name. Look, uh, anything, it can go any way with me. That's why she got canceled. Gay people don't take it kindly that you would, uh, as a derogatory, call me gay. Gay people don't feel <laughs> like it's derogatory. <laughs> so why are you trying to shame Ooh, that's another really good point. That's that's one funny thing that they often do, especially the liberals, is that um, they know that inherently it's a bad thing. So even though they do it on a regular basis, engage in you know sexual deviance, they will insult you and call you a homosexual or closeted homosexual, knowing that it's an insult because it's a bad thing. Uh, but they are making up a lie that can never be proven or disproven. And this is the, the cleverness of their, their, their evil. You know, that's like, it's like me calling someone a racist. Well, they can never prove it or disprove it. I can just keep reasserting it. And this is what they do. They, they did this to Kevin Samuels as well. Carrying on. Me with something in a community I don't even belong in. There's no gay people saying I belong over there or been over there. You did but I have no hatred of over there, and how dare you? You did a number on it, though. Hey. You did a number on it. That, no, that's legendary. No, you either believe in karma or you don't. Because I didn't even know any of the stuff that she had done to my fellow comedians until afterwards. I just know she that it was a setup. Right. And, and, and remember, they, they tried to kill me this same weekend not in jokes, with a real gun in my real... <laughs> my boy said with a... My boy said with a real clapper. <laughs> it get like that. It's, it's, that's gonna happen. Face on real camera. Understand I'm losing my life for participating in something that goes along with my job. Like, just two comedians. What do you mean? And, and the world was okay with it because it was me. Had that happened to anyone else, the world went crazy when Will smacked, smacked Chris. This is a person pulling a whole gun on a comedian in the... Listen, I, I don't know what happened, but I'm curious. I, I've, I didn't know about that. That's fascinating. The confines of their job. It's, a, it's really a weird situation uh, when they hate you that bad. Yes, bad. Yeah. You felt she hated you at that moment because you you mentioned that she said it was going to be very professional. Oh, you want an Emmy? Congratulations! You put the city on. You own for the city. Yada yada yada. And now, did she mention anything about the Emmy on camera? I believe you saw the video. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, shout out to Cat man. He's like, bro, quit playing with me, man. You saw the video. Why why you ask these dumb questions, man? Shout out to Cat. You know, Kevin Gates, I believe he's also a sexual, de and I believe, we're, we can all be certain he's a sexual deviant. Uh, but one thing I appreciate about Gates and um, Kat is that they don't take the BS questions from the interviewers. They're like, look, man, ask me some real questions, ask me some interesting questions, or let's carry on. We have Teddy came out on Cash Up, said, Happy New Year, Big Saint, Peace to the Saints. Peace to the Saints. There you go. Of that took place. See, the, it <laughs> the issue is that um, all the comedians have to come do these radio stations because right. you have to sell your tickets. And so that means you have to go to the radio. Station. Yes. I, I don't go to the radio station. I don't make posts to sell tickets. I just don't. So you've not seen me. I'm, I haven't, I'm not here in some subservient position nope. where somebody sent me over. I'm. You here out of the kindness of your heart. You are. No, no, I'm saying in, no, but in no, the interview you, yeah, yeah, yes. situation. Yes. Yeah, like, yes, right. For sure. Yeah, and this person knew I wasn't there for that or 
Yeah, it's but how hard because you have to understand she is a female and so you have to be careful. <laughs> Shout out to Shannon Brody says she is a female. Now, the gentleman earlier who had asked about uh, women and equal opportunity and, uh, you know, he had mentioned oppression of women. We have to operate in reality when we can hear Mr. Sharp say, well, she is a woman. And then there's about to be a caveat. Women even say, I'm a woman. And then there's a caveat. And it's fair enough. It, it, you are a woman. You know, let us acknowledge that and acknowledge what goes along with that. But as long as that's a fact and it always will be a fact, then we cannot put the female uh, at the same responsibility of the man. And we cannot expect out of a female what we would expect out of a man and vice versa. We can't expect out of a man what we would expect out of a woman. Uh, increasingly, the society becomes androgynous, uh, not only in appearance, but also in thinking and behavior and that you can't tell the two apart. And that is something that we must uh, address because it is very problematic and detrimental, uh, in fact, to human life itself. You have to handle her with kid gloves. Sir, sir, <laughs> sir. you want to go ahead and take that out? You don't want to be against equality, do you? No, no. <laughs> what you just said was very unequal, sir. Bruh, but I you think maybe you've had yeah. enough of this. <laughs> because I think I just heard a cat. Cat be talking that talk. Did, did Cat move the drink away from him? He said, Brody, you've been sipping too hard. You, you about to get yourself canceled? Oh, my, oh, my. You say but can't you, can't that women are not equal and should be they, treated unequally. They are, and I, they want to be treated. You mean equal. as a comedian? No, no. They want, listen, you understand and I understand. <laughs> In certain situations, they want to be treated equal. Not all situations. <laughs> and, and what part of what you saw her get? Oh, she what, deserved everything no, you no, gave her. What part would have been different if she was a man? <laughs> it would have just been more vicious. Yeah, that, that's right, that. right. There you go, boy. There you go. It it had just been more vicious. It get like that, man. For real though. They the funny thing is sometimes you gotta chastise them and they think they got that work. It's like, baby, you ain't got that work. You got off easy, trust me. That's my point. I, took, my I point. took all the vicious and you venom took, away because it. I didn't have any. Plus I understood. I'm not trying to offend black women with short hair. I'm not trying to offend heavyset women. I'm not trying to upset fellow comedians. I'm not trying to do any of that. And I can't, I am qualified to be able to do none of that and still eviscerate you because I'm smart enough to know that I need to say that you have gnarled fingers because I know your limited education means you don't know what the word means. So you can't possibly respond to it. You're not sure of the meaning. And I'm going to continue hitting you because this is what comedians do. Right. You've been masquerading that you're a comedian too. And mm. that's the fallacy. Mm. So and nobody I like that. See, this is bringing to light so many things. You hear me? For example, one thing that I find to be funny and bothersome is that a lot of the nerds on the internet, they're, you know, they're beta males and incels, and they, they want to masquerade and lie to themselves and claim that they're alpha males and savages and beasts and high value men. And then when they see a conflict, right, they see me go against BBMLD and obliterate them. They're like, you're mean. I'm like, but I thought we were all savages. I thought we were alpha males. Yeah, I just had to reestablish the hierarchy. Me on top. You dig? Like, I thought, you're mean. Well, you can't talk to him like that. That's mean. Like, come on. I, th I thought we were all savages here. I thought we were beasts. No, not really. And so... You know, when Kat says, well, we're all comedians here. She's a comedian. I'm a comedian. Okay, you want to exchange jokes? Let's crack jokes. Same thing. I'm like, oh, you're an alpha male? I'm an alpha male? Great. That's fantastic. Let's be alpha males. In nature, how do we establish who's the top dog? Well, when you look at the lower animals, somebody got to get their head tore off for us to be clear on that, right? Like somebody got to get chewed up. You hear me? Somebody, you got to pull them talons out and slash across somebody's face so we could figure out who's the top dog and everybody could play their role. So why am I a bad guy? You hear me? Shout out to the apex predator in the building. In boxing fights out of their weight class. If you're a 130 pounder, you don't just show up with the 160 pounders. You stay in your weight class. Huh. Is that what you wanted to do? No. That she was out of her league when no. it came to... Because I didn't she, want to do any of it. I know you didn't want, didn't want to, to but once she took it there, 
you did you feel that you had to go there? It was all oh, you go there. It was up. You could have said, Wanda, I didn't come here for that. I just want to do the interview. I just want to talk about what happened. Oh, you misunderstand my job. My <laughs> my job is to be funny. Uh, uh. <laughs> my job is to be funny first. <laughs> my first job is to be funny. My yeah. second job is to be respectful. <laughs> my third job is to be immaculate and Gaza strip it. Ooh. Huh? Oh. That's non-political. Ooh. I'm saying, if Ooh. you do it, you let a terrorist accidentally touch over here, and I won't stop burning you down until there ain't nothing left. Huh? It'll literally be rubble on top of rubble, and I'll Let's still go. be bombing. That why? was hood. Because that's that was why hood. You should mind your <laughs> that was hood. He said, "I do that broad like the Gaza Strip." Brody said, "It's gonna be rubble on top of rubble, and I'm still bombing." Bro, like, everybody dead. I'm bombing their dead bodies. I don't care. Get him out of here. I love it. And I feel the same way. This, this is funny. I, I got to invite Kat to dinner. You know what I mean? We got to chop it up. Because the philosophy is so aligned. You no, know, Kat needs some of this ism. You know what I mean? We need him within the assassin. Because what do I say? Kill an ant with a sledgehammer. And it got to be like that. Business. This is what F around and find out is about. Right. Huh. Have you ever been booed, Cat? Um. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that was awkward. I have. What was that feeling like? Did it like want to give up? Because we don't. I mean, because when you have, I mean, I don't know how early it was in your career. Obviously, it hadn't been in the. I don't think it's in the last decade because you've been immaculate. Have you ever dropped a pass? I have. <laughs> I've been booed too. You know, cat funny as hell. <laughs> have you ever dropped a pass? So <laughs> funny guy. Sainz, I'll give you some time to send your comments, questions, tuition, timestamps as we wind down. The little segment between everything is fine and I got it, and then you noticing where it is now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's that. Um, the thing about as a comedian, the audience's opinion is the only opinion that matters, not you, the writer, not none of that. Talk about And it. so I don't think any comedian has ever been booed unnecessarily. You know, there's one thing that is consistent throughout Kat's uh, conversation is that that accountability. You know, he didn't say, you know, there's times I was funny and they booed me anyway. He's like, look, if they booed, then it wasn't funny enough. If they booed, it wasn't good enough. And that's a fact. And that's why I often I talk to you guys about markets. I try my best to respond to markets. You see, you know, people come on here because they know Cat Williams is funny. And so they like the topic. And I try to slide in some ism, slide in some life advice that can be helpful to you. But I understand the market is only going to click the link if it's a pretty woman, if it's a celebrity name, if it's something like that. They're not going to click the link that says engage in self-improvement for a better life. Right. So you have to respond to markets and you have to be accountable. I can't say I'm smart. I'm articulate. Why doesn't everyone want to listen to me talk about self-improvement or personal finance or technology? It doesn't matter if I think I'm smart and if I think I'm all these great things. It matters what the audience feels and has to say and what they want to watch. And so you have to create a product for the audience. And that's why I don't buy the, the conspiratorial ideas. Is that a word, conspiratorial? Uh, the conspiracy ideas that, you know, the CIA created gangster music so that they could make the blacks hurt each other and end up in prison to recreate slavery. It's like, ah, uh, well, the blacks also listen and enjoy. Thank you. Uh, the blacks also listen and enjoy gangster rap music so clearly there was a market for it um so you know this is silliness either uh, uh, <laughs> they des they deserve it. oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm saying i'm saying i'm saying what what do they say when a guy shoots the air ball in the nba they say air ball and make sure everybody knows but again he still got to get back on d right like the game didn't end he don't get to throw his hands up and sulk Right. That's supposed to be used as a learning experience. Most comedians don't get booed enough. Mm. I mean, this is how you end up with a Michael Blackson who's a real African doing a fake African accent. Okay, move, don't. Uh, this guy is mad at me. All I did was give him the best. Of Bruh, he back on his, he back on demon time. Uh, and you know what I agree with? 
uh, cat in as much as I don't find Michael Blackson to be funny at all. Obviously, I've traveled widely in Africa and I've never heard that accent that he has. And so Cat is right in that he might have an African accent from whatever country he's from, but he's overemphasizing it in a way that maybe is funny to some goofy Americans, but is overall just not clever and not comical and it's overplayed. Like, you mother sucker! No, you, you, you mother sucker, come here! Like, it's like, ah, like, nah, that's, that's not funny, actually. And again, it, it edges on that, that overly simple comedy that I find, like, kind of the reason I really don't love Kevin Hart. <clears throat> and I think Kat is right. You know, we do need higher standards, but I also think that there's certain persons that rise to the top, not because they're the cream of the crop, but because they serve a, a certain agenda or because they are... Um, they're not going to rock the boat. You know, like we need a comedian. We don't need Dave Chappelle because he might say something about Transformers. So we don't need Dave Chappelle. He might rock the boat too much. We don't need Cat Williams. He might say something that's too honest. Uh, bring in Michael Blackson. He ain't not the funniest guy, but, you know, people will laugh. He'll get the job done. Bring in Kevin Hart. He's a cute little black guy. He's harmless. No one thinks twice about him. Yeah, bring him in. They kind of fill that emptiness that gap it's just like we didn't need a great comedian we needed somebody and that's why i always tell you guys when you're pursuing opportunity just throw your name in the hat that's what was taught to me by one of my mentors in baltimore because sometimes they just need somebody it's true of jobs it's true of opportunities they just need somebody very rarely do they need somebody great or do they need the genius Advice of his life. Remember, he was wearing dirty dashiki, and I told him he needed to dress to be in the position that he's trying to say that he's in. And if you're the African king of comedy, sir, there's actually comedians in Africa doing comedy. If you're going to say that, you got to go to Africa and get a school, dude. Everybody got you. You got to put in some work. And these guys, they take my advice. They change their whole persona. And and then they hate me for it. And generally, I'm just too big to comment or make a statement about it or do a live or any of that. But when it gets to be a whole grouping of these guys, I got to come and talk to Shannon. <laughs> <laughs> I got to lay it down. Shout out to Shannon Sharp for having that like extraordinarily fake laugh. Like I, I just, good Lord. I, I just pray that I don't end up as one of these internet or entertainer dudes that's just like laughing too hard. I mean, we got such a fake world. You ever watch one of those um, sitcoms and then like there's a, a joke and then, you know, they, they play the, the live audience applause or the live audience laugh and you're like, there's not even an audience there. That's like a pre-recorded laugh or uh, clapping. It's like, what is this fake world we're in? I'm at the altar. <laughs> You know every comedian. This is, this is the other side of Kirk Franklin prank. <laughs> <laughs> this is the reckoning. 2024. The reckoning. You, you, you caught up? We have Walter came in with a PayPal, said good stuff, two streams, one day. Indeed. Caught up. I appreciate that. Saints, it's been a pleasure to have this time to fellowship with you all. Let us end this with our tradition, the creed of the assassin. Repeat after me with full conviction, knowing this is true of you. The creed of assassin. I'm going to be who I truly am because I am remarkable and I'm going to strive every moment to show the greatest part of who I am. Until next time, peace to the saints.